Okay, time to start the game. Um, how do I... actually played this yet. Yay. <laughs> I I watched the anime, but I have not actually played the game. Fucked up. <laughs> so is the anime, but it, that's based on that. It's fun like the perfect person to watch a playthrough because <laughs> you don't even know what it is yet <laughs> I, I know what this game is I have um, I, I've actually played VR almost RP games uh, based on the premise uh, I've also seen the anime but I haven't actually played the, the game which predated the anime yet uh, so yay <laughs> this this is a uh, it's very, it's very interesting. Right. Should I be voice acting? <laughs> Ropes Peak Academy. All right. It brings in top students from every field imaginable. A government-funded school of privilege. <laughs> they say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. One, you have to already be attending high school. Two, you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary student can enroll here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. <laughs> oh, good model covers some of the text. <laughs> Yeah. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school, filled with the ultimate students, was me. Before we go any farther, I guess I should introduce myself. My name's Makoto Naegi. Okay, so it. So I guess some of these segments are voiced, <laughs> but not all of them. <laughs> As you can see, I'm nothing but a hopelessly average high school student. Average on the outside, average on the inside. <laughs> I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do, but it's not like I'm a psychic or mutant or whatever. Like, if you asked me what my favorite song was, or my favorite movie or TV show, they'd all just be whatever's most popular at that particular moment. Even among the average, I'm completely average, so I can't even say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figure it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. But, you know, if I have any kind of strong point, so to speak, I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. I mean, look at me. I'm completely ordinary, but still, here I am, standing in front of the anything but ordinary Hope's Peak Academy. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. It's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I would feel this way. What you have to understand is, well, let me just tell you about the preparation I did last night to get ready for today. Hope's Peak only invites those students who are the truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic, there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. 
so to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. And all I saw was talk about the ultimate students, who are way beyond your average high schooler. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop group famous all over the country. There's also the ultimate baseball star. He was the cleanup hitter for the national high school champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. Then there's the ultimate fashionista. She's been on the covers of tons of fashion magazines. She's what every high school girl wants to be. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader too. The scary thing is, he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love the guy. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, <laughs> the ultimate gambler, the ultimate swimming pro, the ultimate programmer, the ultimate clairvoyant, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. It was the country's finest, top to bottom. I felt like a tame little house cat who wandered into a pride of lions. But still, there was something I couldn't stop thinking about. You see, there were a few students who, who could, I couldn't find any info on no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those other new students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? Could they be just average students like me without any talent or anything? The, that thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of personality, but beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. <laughs> we recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you have been selected and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. They spelled it out plain as day. I got invited by pure luck. <laughs> Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer, but after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. But then, actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8 a.m. The meeting still isn't for a little while, but I should probably just head in. Yeah, let's do this. I gathered up all my determination and tried to act like I'd done this a million times before. And I took my first step toward the main hall. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says it's 7.10 a.m. The meeting doesn't start until 8 o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. It makes sense nobody else would be here yet. I was so wound up, I got here way too early. I have plenty of time before the meeting. Just standing around waiting isn't exactly... I should take a look around the school. Maybe that'll help me calm down a little. I am a student here now, so there shouldn't be any problem with me having a look around, right? It'll help me kill some time, if nothing else. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into Hope's Peak Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least, that's what I was hoping for. What the? But the instant I took that first step forward, my view became warped, twisted. It was like some kind of delusion, melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, then spinning again. And the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began. And how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized. The reason I brought to Hope's Peak Academy wasn't because I had ultimate good luck. It was so I could experience ultimate despair. <laughs> Welcome to despair, prologue. <laughs> There we go. This is not a bright, happy high school story. Nope. <laughs> uh, yes, save. Uh, okay. What? Oh, okay. I'm 
so start. Yeah, it's a little fucked up in it. woke up with my head resting on the top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. It's pretty normal for me to zonk off in the middle of some boring class or whatever, but what was I doing asleep here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck is going on? Welcome to Hoax Peak Academy. Firstly, we'd like to explain the basic controls. You can use the mouse to adjust your aim. If you aim at an object you can interact with, you can press the left mouse button. And presto, you'll investigate that object. Use the WASB buttons to adjust your viewpoint. Or you can press and hold the right mouse button and move the mouse around. Uh, why don't you try looking around the classroom? Okay. That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drool I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's that on the desk? An orientation guide? It's some kind of cheap looking pamphlet. And there's something handwritten on it. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, this school will be your entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window should be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. And if I were to knock on it... Yep, definitely metal. Thick, too. Very solid. Well, that's not what matters here. More importantly, why are there metal plates over the windows? Is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in. I guess they have these to keep weirdos from just wandering in. That's a TV. The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not that weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off. I wonder what it is. Classroom a little more before I head out. Okay. Jeez, I can't believe it's already 8 o'clock. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really been almost an hour since then? Okay, let's see. So what might have happened is I got myself so wound up I passed out in the main hall and then someone carried me here? If that's true, it must mean this is a classroom inside Hope's Peak. But then if that's true, that just raises more questions. This is all really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows. It's like it's a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past meeting time. There might be other students there now. You, you can leave the classroom by pressing the R key. Okay. Jeez, this hallway is kind of weird too. This is getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well, for now, I'll just head to the main hall. Use the WASD keys to move through the hallway. Hold down the shift key while moving to run. Okay. Also, you can press the tab key to bring up a map. Press the tab key again to close the map. How convenient. Okay. Cool. Alright. The Spare Hotel. I guess it's a place where people will stay overnight. But anyway, I need to get to the main hall. Okay. That's interesting and kind of creepy. All right. What is this? Wonder where this red door leads. I'm starting to feel sick standing here. Okay. By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Whoa, hey! Another new kid? Huh? Then you guys are all... Yeah, we're all new here. Today's supposed to be our first day of class. So, counting him, that makes 15. 
Seems like a good cutoff point, but I wonder if this is everyone. Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been handpicked by the school. I looked around at everyone who'd gathered here, taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel some kind of aura coming from each of them. Um, how's it going? My name's Makoto Nayagi. Sorry I'm late, a bunch of stuff happened, and then all of a sudden I was just asleep. Huh? Whoa, you too? Hmm. Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. Mm -hmm. So strange. I declare beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. Uh, what are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's Got going it. on right now. Just a moment, there's something else we must address. Listen to me. Makoto, your tardiness is unacceptable. Surely you were aware the meeting was start to start at 8am sharp. To be late on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you, and you must accept your due punishment. What? What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. That's right! Everyone just calm down. Listen, why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? Huh? The hell? Now's no time for friggin' introductions? <laughs> maybe, but it may be good to at least find out who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other if we don't know each other's names? Yeah. That's a good point. Um... Okay, so let's get introductions out of the way. Then we can move on to whatever else. Sound good? I'm still totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So I guess this is as good a chance as I'm gonna get. I already looked everyone up on that Hope's Peak Academy thread online, but I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to these five over here. Okay, cool. I'm Kiyotaka Ishimaru. I believe in bold simplicity. Let's work together on our educational crusade. Ultimate moral compass. <laughs> so that's Kiyotaka. According to what I saw about him on that thread, he went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with his community's public morals committee. They say he respects morals above all else, earning him the title of Ultimate Moral Compass. Mm. Anyway, you can call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Naegi, right? That's a good name, a strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. You hear me? And to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Life is worth putting every ounce of effort into it. Right? Right. This guy is kind of annoying. <laughs> Alright. Toko Fukawa. Not that you'll remember my name anyway, but I'm Toko. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men poll. Despite her age, she's won countless literary prizes and all her books are instant bestsellers, which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figure she'd be a lovey-dovey type, what with her masterpiece being a romance and all. What's your problem? What? It's not polite to stare, you know. <laughs> Stop staring at me like I'm some filthy creature! F filthy creature? No, I just thought... I, I know what you just thought! You just thought you've never seen such an ugly woman! You just thought it would- it was so funny! <laughs> no, that's not what I was thinking at all! I Don't bother you. trying to lie to me! <laughs> I know it's true! Otherwise you- I know you can't stand looking at me! Anyway... W whatever I don't really care. I'm used to it. Wow, talk about an inferiority complex! <laughs> I was way off about what a successful author would be like. <laughs> Lol? Sayaka Maizuno. Okay. Hi, I'm Sayaka Maizuno. I look forward to getting to know you. The way she moves is positively mesmerizing, and that pleasant scent I can't quite place. Sayaka Maizuno. 
When I saw her name in that thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and in magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd be going to the school. I'm sure she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive! <laughs> huh? Did you hear me? I'm psychic. Huh? <laughs> Kidding! I just have really good intuition. She's a hey, sharp one. Um... Huh. Hey, by any chance... Now what? Huh? Yeah, it must be. I'm sure of it. Hey, Makoto just did... Hold on. Jeez, you guys, how long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Um, Sorry, I just got carried away, I guess. You hear me? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bumbling through a bunch of idle chit-chat. Um, You're right. Sorry. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. It sounded like Sayaka really had something she wanted to say, but it's not like we'll ever see each other again. Like I said, we can talk later. Yo, the name's Leon Kuwata. What's up? I recognize that name. He played for the National High School Champs as their cleanup hitter, the ultimate baseball star. And that superb athletic specimen is... You? Seriously? Huh? What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just surprised. I figured with you being the ultimate baseball star and all... What, were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? <laughs> no, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty looking traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found that article and picture of you online, that's how you looked then. <laughs> what? Oh man, you found that picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. <laughs> this is not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. <laughs> I didn't have a choice, okay? Shoving your head like that is part of national championship regulations. But now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Hey, listen. Actually, I can. Can I be totally honest with you? You know. I don't like baseball, like at all. I've never gone to a single practice. He's never practiced, and he was still his team star player. He's some kind of prodigy. Yeah. And as soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? <laughs> My only path in life is getting into music. You feel that star quality aura I have, right? You know what I mean. I'm gonna be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on a guitar, and we're set. How cool is that? This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like super cool to the max. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball all star. Goddamn, that's a lot of words. That's a lot of reading. I am Hifumi Yamada, but if you want to call me by my nickname... The Alpha and the Omega! I don't mind. This guy is cringe. <laughs> he looks like a hamster! <laughs> mm -hmm. Am I the only one who thinks he looks like a hamster? When he does that thing with his mouth? <laughs> by the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? <laughs> world of 2D? <laughs> well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. <laughs> he looks like a hamster! Look at him! Look at him! He even has hamster teeth! <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. <laughs> It looks like a hamster! The face! Like, look at the mouth! Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. However... The words of such idiots mean nothing to me. I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. <laughs> I am a soldier, serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fanfiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nagy, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. Mm -hmm. For my work is filled with deepest meaning. What, what kind of meaning? 
Yes, indeed. It's about embracing our basest urges. I don't think I want to comprehend it. <laughs> okay, now to talk to these five people over there. <sighs> That's a lot of reading. Goddamn. Hey, yeah. I'm Aoi Asahina, but my friends just call me Hina. Sup? Aoi Asahina. She's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since elementary school. She's even been chosen as an upcoming Olympic cadet. She is, without a doubt, the ultimate swimming pro. The combination of her ability, appearance, and um, proportions has been widely discussed online. So, uh, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Naegi. <laughs> oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that. It is You got that. it! Sure, sure, got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. Yeah. Makoto Neegi. Makoto Neegi. She just kept repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she was writing something. What are you doing? You don't know? If you want to remember someone's name, you gotta write it on your hand three times. I've never heard that before in my life. <laughs> mm. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spell it exactly like it sounds. Mm. Um... <laughs> Well, I have no idea. <laughs> I'll just figure it out later and write it down. Okay. Anyway, glad to meet you. Sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned is she's totally easily going and bursting with energy. Okay. Hello, <sighs> nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. Okay. Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. <laughs> anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here, nice to meet huh? you. Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Uh, I don't think so. We just met for the first time, which is why I said nice to meet you. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, good point. Sorry. You don't have to apologize for yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Chihiro Fujisaki is known for the all-cutting-edge program she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her to her legion of fans. Um, hey, so listen. Uh, I'm, I I'm, sorry. Re I'm really sorry. Huh? What are you apologizing for um, now? Well, just because you seem upset. You must be mad at me, right? No, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Huh? huh? Lost in thought? Yeah, it had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. Oh, that's good. I was afraid maybe you didn't like me. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm starting to understand why her fans are so into her. Okay. <sighs> um, can I ask you your name? Da -da -da. My name is Kyoko Kirigen. She's pretty tight-lipped, huh? Oh, but you know, her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope's Peak Academy thread. And I did see that there were students like me, ones who didn't have any real identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? Um, so what are you doing at the school? What? What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? That doesn't matter. Why should I tell you? Huh? Well, I guess you don't have to tell me. No, I don't have to tell you, so I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked by chance like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. If she doesn't want to tell me anything, no point in asking. Hi! I'm Junko Enoshima. Charmed, I'm sure. Anybody would recognize this one. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her on tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. What? Huh? Come on. Oh, are you talking about my cover photos and junk? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. Those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? Well, you know, edited to hell and back with, like, computers and junk. Oh, so they aren't real. 
What can we do? Come on, don't act so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. Totally. It's totally normal these days to Photoshop the crap out of cover photos. If you're surprised by that, you'd be totally blown away by a certain dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk super big and tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. Oh. So many dreams are getting crushed today. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna see if there's a way for me to turn down the fucking... Okay, apparently not. The music is so loud! My name's Mondo Awada. Nice to fucking meet ya. Damn. Mondo Awada, huh? Which means... He's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's earned respect, even awe, from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. Um, nice to meet you yeah. too. Hell yeah. I'd better be careful around him. One wrong word and I can wake up at the bottom of the sea. Ah, there's more! <laughs> Fucking hell. Um. I am Sakura Ogami. Oh jeez, I almost asked her if she was a guy. The day I say something like that out loud is the day I get turned into a human meatball. <laughs> but now I remember, she competed in a martial arts tournament in America and won despite being a girl. <laughs> She's the ultimate martial artist. She's fought in over 400 matches and never lost a single one. That thread also said a bit more about her. Some call her Ogre. Some even think she's the closest known relative to the primates. The famed Missing Link. Damn, that's rude. <laughs> Any incoming Hope Speak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. Standing in front of her now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Hey. Hey, you. Huh? Yes? I snapped to attention without even realizing it. Then she started to poke and prod at me. Um, what are you? I see. Muscular quality and quantity is the right is right around that of an extremely ordinary high school student. Hmm. Hmm. What a shame. You're not at all fit to act as my training partner. <laughs> I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. <laughs> okay. Name's Byakuya Togami. <sighs> huh. Nice to meet you. That's the most half-assed introduction I've ever heard. But there isn't really anything I can do about it. Even among the ultimate students, this one is special. Byakuya Togami. He's the heir apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. He's already started managing business operations, and his own personal assets are, well, vast. His title of ultimate affluent progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. That's everything I learned about him from that Hope's Peak Academy thread online. Come on. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you gonna stand there? Go away. I'm sick of looking at you. <laughs> Hizara says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level, like a king in training. <sighs> I'm Yasuhiro Hagakure. Hero for short. Take it easy, yeah? I know I will. Oh my god. <sighs> Yasuhiro Hagakure, known as Supernova in the psychic community, the trend-setting ultimate clairvoyant. Honestly, I don't really get all that fortune-telling stuff. It's pretty much beyond me. Still, I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. Could it be? Uh, okay, I give up. Huh? What happened? Serious? I saw it. I looked right at it. Seriously, I totally saw it. Saw what? Hmm. A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off with a skyfish in its mouth. What? <laughs> And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But hey, we should grab some brewski sometime and get real deep into Lemuria and its civilization. What? We're not allowed to drink. We're in high school. You know? Oh, I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times. See, and well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. <laughs> oh? I do not think we have been introduced. I am Celestia Ludenberg. Okay. Celestia Luden, huh? 
Ludenberg. It is my name, but if you don't mind, I would prefer you to call me Celeste. Um, you are Japanese, right? Huh? Of course. Why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Celestia Ludenberg is my real name. But as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. She's polite, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. I guess the rumors in that thread were right about her. The self-styled Celestia Ludenberg. She's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament, earning the title Queen of Liars. She totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. <laughs> I look forward to getting to know you better. <laughs> that smile is beyond deceptive. I'd better watch myself around her. Okay. And with that, all the introductions are done. Even though they're all ultimate, they each have their own individual sort of uh, something. Okay, time to get down to business. There, this is no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull-eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something. What was that about? Um, well, listen. you see... Uh, um, Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, the same is true for all of us. Wait, seriously? I mean, seriously? Just after each of us got to the main hall, we lost consciousness, and when we came to, we were somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But that's just weird that every one of us would get knocked out like that. Piece of shit! Exactly! That's why we're all freaking out! <laughs> and that's not the only thing. You saw where all the windows in the classes and hallways were, right? But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What's that about? Are you for real? Plus, all my stuff's missing, even my cell phone. Um... Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA anywhere either. Mm. And then there's the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch. It's me. But there wasn't anything like that when I first got what here. The heck? What the heck? What's it doing here? <laughs> Maybe we got caught up in some kind of, like, you know, crime or something? Is it like... What, like a kidnapping? You think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at school? Hey, come, come on, on, don't think like that. Cheer up! I bet this is all just part of the school's orientation procedure. You know? Yeah, I'm sure that's it, so I'm just gonna take it easy for a little bit. I see. Oh, so you think they wanted us to do something to surprise us? What the hell? Huh. Well, if that's all it is, it's nap time you know for me. I, mean. I was way up there. I was up way too late last night, so I could use this little shut eye. I could feel everyone's tension evaporating. But then it began. <sighs> Jesus. Ahem, ahem, testing, testing. Mic check, one, two. This is a test of the school broadcast system. Am I on? Can everyone hear me? Okay, well then. The voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned. I couldn't help but feel a deep, unnerving dread at the sound of it. It was like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident. Uh, to all incoming students, I would like to begin the entrance ceremony at... Right now! Please make your way to the gymnasium at your earliest convenience. That's all. I'll be waiting. Huh? What the hell was that just now? Well then, if you'll excuse me. Hey! H hey! What? You're just gonna take off like that? Could it be? Oh yeah, now I get it. This whole thing was just to get us all pumped for the entrance ceremony. <laughs> Man, thank God it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked if this was real. You know? All right, guess I'll head out too. Wonder what they got planned for us next. Huh. Uh... Dang, I was totally looking forward to that nap too. Why'd they have to go and kill the mood? Huh? Wait for me! I want to go with you! <laughs> that is that, then. I will see you all there. Anyway... Not that anyone cares, but I'm gonna go, too. Everyone took off for the gym, but I was frozen where I stood. That uneasy feeling I'd had before, I couldn't get it out of my mind. And it looked like I wasn't the only um, one. This... this doesn't seem right. This is bad. Yeah, that announcement was totally weird. However... Maybe, but just staying put doesn't mean we'll be safe. 
Besides, aren't you guys just a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? I see. If we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. I guess she's right, but still, I'm kind of, no, really nervous. We don't have a choice. We have to go. They said to go to the gym, right? Okay, let's save. Area, yep, we're going to the gym. Alright. Uh okay, wait. Hey, come on! God, I had no idea this Hope's Peak Academy place was gonna be such a pain in my balls. It really ain't that much different from the time I spent in Juvie. Hell, this place is even worse! Um... And why isn't there anyone here? Walking through the halls, I didn't see a single person. This is bad. Isn't that, like, seriously not good? <sighs> They're just trying to spook us. They'll take all those metal plates down later, I'm sure of it. <sighs> all we can do now is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Shit. Well, hell, it ain't like I'm scared or nothing. Let's just get this over with. Hey, damn it. Hey, where's whoever called us what here? Mondo, stop! No running! Well, then. I too shall go. <coughs> hey! Wait! Don't leave me here alone! <laughs> okay, time for some more tutorial action. You can press the tab key to observe the room you're in. Observing will display what people and objects you can interact with. Sorry for the late notice. Okay. Alright. This school has a lot of TVs. They couldn't all just be for that weird school broadcast, could they? A display case. There are all kinds of trophies and plaques inside. Of course, all the students who go here are ultimate, right? So this is probably just a tiny fraction of all their awards. Total silence. For whatever reason, she's the only one managing to stay calm. Or maybe I'm just imagining that. Um. Where are all the other students? Why are we the only ones here? This is I'm bad. totally getting a bad vibe right now. Another surveillance camera. I feel like we're being watched every second. I don't like it. Okay, here we go. Still filled with uneasy, uneasy <laughs> still filled with uneasy dread. I did what the announcement said and went into the gym. And what I saw was waiting for us there. Oh, it really does look like an entrance ceremony. Yo. See? Told ya. It's totally normal interest ceremony stuff. Hero was right, but in a way, that just emphasizes how completely not normal all of us were. Hey there! Howdy! Hello! Is everyone here? Good! Then let's get things rolling! Teddy bear? I'm not a teddy bear. I am Monokuma! And I am this school's headmaster! It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Right before my eyes, it was... What I was seeing was, it was utterly incomprehensible. Nice to meet you all! Such a bright voice and carefree attitude was completely out of place. And all that anxiety I'd been carrying with me suddenly transformed into outright fear. Say what? That teddy bear can talk! <laughs> Calm down. I'm sure there's just a speaker inside it. Hey, come on now. 
I told you already, I'm not a teddy bear. <laughs> I am Monokuma, and I'm your headmaster. <laughs> ah, it moved! <laughs> Seriously, man, calm down. It's probably just a remote control toy or something. How dare you compare me to a child's plaything? You've cut me deep, deeper than the Mariana Trench. <laughs> My remote control system is so complex, even the folks at NASA can't recreate or even comprehend it. Ah, but don't make me say stuff that might destroy NASA's dreams. I just couldn't bear that. Bear that? Really? You are unfortunate. Now then, moving on. We really must hurry and get started. Come on. Giving up already? No other stupid bear puns? Now then. Quiet down now, quiet down. Okay, so... He has abandoned the gag. Good morning! Everyone stand at attention and bow, and good morning! You hear me? Good morning! What's your problem? You don't have to say it back. Now then. Now then, let us commence with a most noteworthy and memorable entrance ceremony. First, let's talk a bit about what your school life will be like. Now, uh, make no mistake, you few students so full of potential represent the hope of the world. And to protect such splendid hope, you will all live a communal life together solely within the confines of this school. Everyone will live in harmony together and adhere to the rules and regulations of the school. Huh? Hmm. Ah, now then, regarding the end date for this communal life. Too bad. There isn't one. In other words, you'll all be here until the day you die. Such is the school life you've been assigned. Hmm. Wh what did he just say? Until the day we die? Yep. Oh, but fear not. We have quite an abundant budget, so you won't lack for all the common conveniences. Hold on a second. That's the least of our worries right now. Yeah, what the hell? You're saying I have to live here forever? You're screwing with us, right? It's true. I am not screwing with you. I am no liar. Of that, you can be 100% sure. Uh -huh. Ah, and just for your information, you're completely cut off from the outside world. So you don't have to worry about that dirty, dirty land beyond these walls ever again. <laughs> Cut off? So all those metal plates all over the school... They're there to keep us trapped in here? Phew. That's exactly what they're there for. No matter how much you may yell and scream for help, help will not come. So with all of that in mind, feel free to live out your life here with reckless abandon. Hey, come on. Come on, what the hell is this? I don't care if the school or whoever is behind it all. This is just a really bad joke. Damn yeah, you. cut the shit out. It isn't funny anymore. I'm you keep like saying this is a lie or a joke. A bunch of skeptics, all of you. What are you gonna but do? I guess you can't help it, huh? You all grew up in an age where you're taught to doubt your neighbor. Well, you'll have plenty of time to find out whether or not what I say is true. And when that time comes, you'll see with your own eyeballs that I speak the undeniable truth. Most unfortunate. Having to live here forever would be quite the problem. What's this? Come now, what's the matter with all of you? You decided your own free will to attend at Hope's Peak Academy, didn't you? And now, before the entrance ceremony is even finished, you've already decided you want to leave. Hey, oh, um... but you know, I guess I did forget to mention one thing. There is one way for you to leave the school. R really? Actually... As headmaster, I've crafted a special clause for those of you who would like to leave. I call it the graduation clause. Now then. Now, let me tell you about this fun little rule. As I mentioned, in order to maintain an environment of harmony here, we rely on a communal lifestyle. And if someone were to disrupt that harmony, they and they alone would be allowed to leave the school. That, my students, is the graduation clause. What, what do you mean by disrupt the harmony? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. If one person were to murder another... M murder Yes, in 
Indeed. Stabbing, strangling, bludgeoning, crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting. How you do it doesn't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave. It's as simple as that. <laughs> the rest is up to you. Give it your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst way possible. A chill shot down my spine. You must kill someone if you want to leave. As soon as I heard those words, my blood went cold. <laughs> I bet that got your brain juices flowing. Beats the heck out of a human catching a salmon, huh? Like I said before, you guys are the hope of the world. But you know, taking that hope and seeing it get murdered creates a darkened shadow of despair. And I just find that so darn exciting! <laughs> what the hell? What the hell are you talking about? To kill each other is... It's... To kill each other is to kill each other! I'm sure there's a dictionary here somewhere if you need it. What are you saying? We know what it means, that's not the problem! Why do we have to kill each other? What? Yeah! Stop blabbering on with all this nonsense! Just let us go home already! Blabbering? <laughs> blabbering? Blabbering? What do you mean, blabbering? Stop blabbering on about blabbering on! <laughs> you guys just don't get it, do you? Let us go! Let us go! You keep on saying the same thing over and over and over! Listen, from this moment on, this school is your home, your life, your world. Got it? <laughs> and you can kill as much as you want to kill. So go ahead, go on a killing spree. <laughs> All right, come on. How long are you going to keep this up? Mm -hmm. Eh? You, know? you got us, okay? You scared the hell out of us. So you can go ahead and reveal the trick now. Huh? Reveal the trick. I'm right. Yeah, because right? I mean, you know, this is all some kind of trick and all, right? So, uh, like, <laughs> dude, shut the hell up and get out of my way. Shoving Hero aside, Mondo placed himself in front of Monokuma, his voice rumbling like thunder. Listen up, asshole! This shit's gone way too far! What the hell kind of joke is this? What's the matter? <coughs> Goddamn. Joke? What? You mean like your hair? You son of a bitch! Fuck! <laughs> Mondo roared out, and then there was a sudden boom. It was the sound of the floorboards as he kicked off and launched himself into the air. He flew at Monokuma, fast and straight as a bullet. He'd locked onto his target. Gotcha, you little piece of shit! I don't know if you're a toy or a stuffed animal or whatever the hell. Either way, I'm gonna rip you to fucking shreds! What? The violence against the headmaster is in violation of school regulations! Shut the fuck up! Let me out of here, I swear to Christ! Hey, damn it! What, no smart ass comeback this time? Piece of shit! Stop that goddamn beeping and say something! Watch out! Watch out! Get rid of it! Huh? Huh? Hurry up and throw it! I don't know if her ferocity stunned him into silence or what, but without a word, he did what he was told. He threw Monokuma, and as soon as he did... The hell? What the? That sure as shit wasn't a joke. It blew the hell up. There was a painful ringing in my ears, and I could smell gunpowder. Explosions might happen all the time in movies or whatever, but when it's in real life... I'd never seen anything like it. But... But, you know, this means that the teddy bear's been destroyed, right? Hey. I told you, I'm not a teddy bear! I'm Monokuma! <laughs> what? There's another one?! Damn. You son of a bitch! You seriously tried to kill me just now! Of course! Well, yes, I was serious about trying to kill you. You did violate one of the school regulations, after all. I'll let you all off with a warning this time, but you'd better be careful from now on. Any naughty boy or girl who violates my rules won't get off with just a little swat on the butt. This is bad. H hey, so does this mean there's like a bunch more of you around somewhere? Yep. Monokumas have been placed all throughout the school, yes. Plus, don't forget the surveillance cameras installed everywhere. And if you're caught breaking any rules, well... 
You all just saw what happened, right? <laughs> and I won't be so forgiving with my punishment next time. So don't let it happen again. Th that's not even punishment. That's just wrong. Well, now then. Lastly, to commemorate your joyous entry into our school, I have a little something for you. This is our official student handbook. Pretty cool, huh? As you can see, it's fully digital. So naturally, we call it the e-handbook. <laughs> Very creative. Ahem. Yes, well, moving on. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. <laughs> when you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. <laughs> Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. What? Also, it's completely waterproof. Splash it, wash it, drown it. It'll keep on ticking. And thanks to its space age design, it can withstand an impact force of up to 10 tons. Very resistant. It contains all of our school regulations, so make sure you review them thoroughly. You'll hear me say this a lot, but any violation of school regulations will not be tolerated. Ching. Rules restrict, yes, but they also protect. Society, for example, would be utter chaos without laws. Yes, the same thing applies here, which is why it's crucial we have strict punishments in place for violators. Okay, well, that brings our entrance ceremony Bye -bye. to a close. Please enjoy your abundantly dreary school life, and see ya! And with that, he was gone, leaving us all in a state of shock. <laughs> so, guys, how would you define what we just experienced? What the crap? How? Why? I don't understand any of this. Hmm? We had to live here forever? Or kill? <laughs> what? What just happened? Everyone, we need to just calm down. First, let's take a second to summarize everything we just heard. Based on what Monokuma said, we essentially have two choices. Choice number one is that we each stay here, living a communal life together until the day we die. And the other choice is... Mm -hmm. If we want to get out of here alive, we have to kill someone, right? That's... But killing someone, that's... <laughs> we were abducted out of nowhere and stuffed into this place meant to look like a school. And now we're supposed to start killing each other? This is... This is... This is just... What is this? Ridiculous. <laughs> a lie is what it is. All these ridiculous things we've heard. This all has to be fake. Hmm. Right now, it doesn't really matter if it's real or fake. What matters is... So in other words... Is there anyone here who's seriously considering all this? To that, nobody had a response. Keeping quiet myself, I looked around at the others. They all stared at one each other, another, trying to gauge each other's thoughts. I could almost taste the hostility. And that's when it hit me. I realized the true terror hidden within the rules Monokuma had laid out. You must kill someone if you want to leave. Those words had planted vicious thoughts deep within each of us. Each of us became suspicious of, each, of everyone else. We were forced to wonder, is somebody gonna betray us? And that was how my new school life began. This school, which had come out of nowhere to raise my hopes so high, is not a school of hope. It's a school of despair. You see what I mean when I say this game is fucked up now? <laughs> it's a fun game. be continued.
let's save that. Um, why is it not? Oh. You must kill someone if you want to leave. My mind froze and my breath caught in my throat as I thought about that. I could feel a paralyzing fear slowly make its way through my body, dominating every last nerve. The air hung heavy on me, pressing down like a weight around my neck. It took everything I had just to endure that weight. But for as heavy as the air felt, all it took to pierce it was her sharp words. And? So, what are you gonna do now? Hey. Just stand around glaring at each other? Her pointed comment was directed at everyone in the room. It helped pull us all back to reality. Yeah. Right! She's right! Listen to me! Sometimes, even if you're nervous or afraid, you just have to step forward. Mm -hmm. To forget such a simple fact? I can't forgive myself. I'm you so ashamed. Me? Please, someone hit me. I can't forgive myself. Somebody hit me. Punish me. <laughs> the fuck? Huh? Jesus, if you have time to yell about it, you have time to do something about it. However... Perhaps, but what is the mission exactly? Stupid. Idiot, to look for a way out. Duh. What the... And we totally need to find whoever was controlling the stupid bear and beat the hell out of him. But... But... but before we do all that, maybe we should take a look at the handbook. It's probably best to check out the school regulations Monokuma mentioned before doing anything else. This is fine. True. If we stumble around with no clue what the rules are, something like that might happen again. Shit. Alright. Fine so then. then. Let's hurry up and check out the stupid rules already. After turning on my e-handbook, the first thing that appeared was my name. So just like Monokuma said, the owner's name should show up front and center. Then, from the main menu that popped up, I selected the school regulations icon. An itemized list appeared on screen. It was the school regulations. In other words, the rules being imposed on us all. Students may reside only within the school. Leaving campus is an unacceptable use of time. Nighttime is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope's Peak Academy at your discretion. Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is strictly prohibited, as is destruction of surveillance cameras. Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes blackened will graduate, unless they are discovered. Additional school regulations may be added as necessary. Feeling a slight dizziness, I raised my face up from the screen. As I looked around, I saw the same stormy expression on everyone's faces. Stop fucking around! This is bullshit! What the hell kind of rules are these? I'm not gonna let them control me! <laughs> Well then, why don't you wander around the school without a care in the world and see what happens? Personally, I would love to see what happens when someone breaks one of the rules. However... But if he got punished like what we saw before, I don't think there'd be a respawn waiting for him. Yo. I, ever since I was a kid, I grew up with my older brother pounding this into my head. When a man makes a promise, he has to keep it, even if it kills him. And... So what? What? I've made a ton of promises that I still have to keep. That's so what? Piece of shit! So I can't afford to die in here! <sighs> None of that made much sense to me, but you were saying you will follow the regulations, is that it? That's true. Huh. Oh, well, yeah, I guess you're right. <sighs> hey, um, I have a question. For regulation number six, what do you think it means exactly? Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes blackened will graduate unless they are discovered. You're talking about the second half, right? Where it says, unless they're discovered? I was wondering about that myself. <laughs> it's saying that if you want to graduate, you have to kill someone without anyone finding out it was you. But, but why? Why do we have to do that? I don't see any reason to worry about it. Just worry about following the rules that they've been explained to us. Such ignorance. Frankly, I don't want to hear anything from someone who waits for others to decide what to do for them. <laughs> don't 
jab at me. Give me a break. More like a full-on stab. Hmm. Well, for now, let's forget all about that silly junk about murderers or whatever. Okay. Now that we know the rules, let's start exploring the school. Hmm. True. We need to find out where exactly we are. Is there any way out? What about food and supplies? You understand? There are tons of questions we need to answer. Let's do it! Damn straight! Okay then, let's all start looking around. Hmm. I'll be going alone. What? What? Why? That's a pretty stupid idea, don't you think? Hmm. Someone here might have already started thinking about murdering one of us. Are you saying we should stand around with them in our midst and make it that much easier for them? Uh, hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second. That would never... Don't bother saying it. It couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. That's why you all seized up with fear when that graduation rule was made clear to you. <laughs> Am I wrong? Uh, um... But... but... Hmm. So, I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for me. Just hold on. Hold on. Like hell I'm gonna let you run off and do whatever what? you want. Out of my way, Plankton. What? What the fuck's that supposed to mean? One tiny bit of Plankton drifting across the sea. So minuscule, so insignificant, they couldn't possibly have any kind of influence on the boundless ocean. You're fucking I'm dead. gonna kick your ass! S stop what? it! We shouldn't fight! The fuck you just say? You're some kind of goody-goody little you bitch? Slow down. Who do you think you are talking to me like that? You think you're my fucking dad or something? No, I wasn't- you son of a Fuck bitch. you! <laughs> Ow. <laughs> he punched me! And I flew back in a heap. It was like something straight out of a comic book. I didn't even see the punch coming. It was just suddenly right there in my face. One second, I was standing there. The next, I was soaring through the air. Now that I think about it, maybe I'd kind of forgotten the kind of people I'd been trapped here with. My common sense had just stopped functioning. Being around all these ultimates had blown my fuses. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised it led to something as absurd as this. But I just lost track of that sense of reality. That was my last thought as my consciousness started to fade. Before it was finally cut out completely. And when I finally opened my eyes again, what I saw was... Huh? Where am I? As if it had become part of my daily routine, I woke up in yet another room I'd never seen before. Okay, so where am I now? You now have access to the handbook menu. You can use this to check a variety of information as you play. Open the handbook menu by pressing the F1 key. You can use this menu to check the school regulations and character info in the report card section. At certain points, map and truth bullets may not be available. You can also save and load the game data under the system section. Finally, press the F2 key to review the transcript. This records all pertinent info, so use this to review comments from everyone involved. Okay, cool. Let's see. Okay. Well, we're gonna... Oh, I can finally view the options menu. right back so yeah let me there we go let's be right back button okay
Okay, I return. I I am back. Okay. Let's see. What is this? Looks like this door leads outside. It's locked. So some of the rooms have locks, huh? Looks like there's something in the drawer. It's a toolkit. It must be brand new. It's still in the shrink wrap. I don't really need it right now, so I'll just leave it here. There's some kind of metal plate mounted here. Okay. Well, what's that? It's a notepad. I guess the school must have given one to each of us. This must be the key to the room. My name's written on the keychain. Which means it must be mine, right? I'd better hang on to it for now. Just an everyday trash can. I don't see any kind of trap door or hidden compartments or anything. It's some kind of lint roller. I guess we're supposed to clean up after ourselves? There doesn't seem to be any particular or <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anything particularly strange about the bed. This would appear to be the bathroom. Huh? It's not opening. I guess it's locked. Some kind of monitor. Okay. Looks like this door leads outside. It's locked. So some of the rooms have locks, huh? Can I... Can I leave? No? There's a piece of paper hanging up on the wall which says... Announcement from Headmaster Monokuma. Each room's lock has been designed to be completely protect against tampering or lockpicking. Remaking an individual room key is quite troublesome, so please make sure not to lose yours. Your room comes furnished with a shower, but please note that the water is turned off at night. Also, the bathrooms in the girls' rooms include a lock of their own. Finally, we've prepared a small gift for each of you. For the girls, a sewing kit. And for the boys, a toolkit. The sewing kit includes a map of the body's vital organs. One stab will do the job, girls! <laughs> for the boys, we believe a strong blow to the head with any of the tools should be ample. Don't think, just feel, and let's all enjoy ourselves. I crumpled up the sheet of paper and threw it in the trash. I think I'm starting to understand. This room must be... Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. This is my assigned dorm room. Someone must have carried me here after I fell unconscious. So that answers that question. The next question is... What's everyone else up, up to right now? There's only one way to find out, and that's to get out of here. Leave the area. Yes. <sighs> I rushed out of the room to meet up with all the others, but there was someone waiting for me there. It was like something out of an old TV show. Ah! Oh, Sayaka? Sorry. Are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. I hope you're okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. She had an embarrassed smile on her face. I stood up slowly. Are you okay, Sayaka? Are you hurt? <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound worse than it is. I'm completely fine. I know how I look, but I've actually built some pretty good muscle jumping up and down on stage. That's good then. Um... But are you okay? You know, from when Mondo hit you? That's true, I got knocked out right there in front of everyone. I guess I revealed my lack of cool right from the beginning. Makoto. Makoto? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Nothing wrong here. That's good. Oh, that's good. I was kind of worried. Thanks. By the way, what are you doing here? Uh, um... Actually, I came to get you. You came to get me? Um, listen... Well, if you really are feeling better, I was hoping you could come to the dining hall. The dining hall? You see... After you got knocked out, everyone decided to go and do their own thing. We decided it would be more effective if we split up to investigate. So we agreed to get together later on and talk about what we'd each found out. 
So does that mean it's almost time to get back together? If that's what's going on, then of course I'll go with you. That's good. Good. I'll go on ahead and meet you at the dining hall then. Okay. Dining hall it is. How to not die. Hide in your dorm room for the rest of your life and never come out. <laughs> uh, is this the dining hall? <sighs> this must be the dormitory dining hall. Um, it looks pretty clean, so that's good. Er, I guess that's not really important right now with us being prisoners here and all. Yeah, that's true. Nobody was there waiting for us. We don't really have much choice. I guess we should just wait here for now. <laughs> hmm, okay, let's just wait here. Huh? You heard that? Like I said, I'm psychic. <laughs> Come on, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I just have amazing intuition. Is it really just intuition? <laughs> it's kind of sudden, I know, but here comes a tutorial. Right now, I'd like to talk about reactions. You're gonna be talking to Saika, right? Well, while you're talking to her, some purple words are going to appear. Here's how they work. When purple words show up, if you press the right mouse button, you'll go into reaction mode. At this point, you can use the WASD buttons to make a selection and the left mouse button to confirm it. Also, when it comes to that dialogue, you can review whatever you talked about to look for more info. Talking to someone about things like this is called a reaction. <sighs> okay, do your best to enjoy your ever important school life. <coughs> Make sure you keep it in mind as the story keeps on moving forward. Okay. Hey, um. By the way, Makoto. Huh? What is it? Um. Well, it's just. I know this is kind of continuing the self introduction thing, but I wanted to ask you something. Oh, I forgot to. God damn it. I wonder what she wants to ask me. Maybe I should ask her first. Hey, um... Yeah, um... Continuing our uh, self-introductions. Um, we kind of got cut off before, but I had a question I wanted to ask you. Sayaka wants to ask me something? I wonder what it is. Now I'm really curious. Okay. Hey, um... Um... There we go. What did you want to ask me? Hmm. Makoto, did you happen to go to Blackroot Junior High? Were you maybe in class too? Y yeah, actually, I was. <sighs> I knew it! I was there too! I was in class four though. Do you remember me? Do I remember? Even back in middle school, she was a celebrity with all kinds of ultimates surrounding her. How could I forget? Almost as surprising as her question was that she remembered me. We'd never even talked to each other, but somehow she still knew who I was. Hey, um. Hey, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm just surprised is all. I wouldn't have thought you'd remember me. <laughs> we went to the same school for three years. Of course I remember. Well, that's true, but there were lots of students in our grade, right? Plus, I've never been the type of person to ever really stand out. I'm average at everything, and all my hobbies are totally normal. Even normal would call me boring. Aww. What are you talking about? You're so strange. S strange? That's... <laughs> <laughs> she started giggling even louder. That somehow mysterious smile of hers has made my heart grow calmer. Her smile was the nicest smile I'd ever seen. That's good. Anyway, I'm really glad that I know somebody here. <sighs> Talking to you has made me feel a lot better about all this. You're amazing, Makoto. N no, I'm really not. <laughs> I'm nothing at all compared to you ultimates. <laughs> but you're the one who helped me find my courage again. Not any of those ultimate students. Thank you for saying that. Okay. And to thank you for helping me out, I'm going to become your ultimate assistant. <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? My assistant? <laughs> Yep, I'm your assistant now. I'm going to help you up out as much as I can, so let's get out of here together. When she says things like that, it it just gets me pumped up. <laughs> Which is nice, but still, everyone else is still late. Besides that, I don't even know what time it is right now. There must be a clock around here somewhere. Uh, so what time is it right now? What? Seven o'clock at night? Um. You were unconscious for a pretty long time. I see. Without being able to look out a window, I've lost all sense of time. If I have to stay in this place for too long, I might just go crazy. Hey, um... I can't believe no one's here yet, but I'm sure they'll start showing up soon. Almost like he timed it. Taka threw open the dining hall doors right as Sayaka said that. Hey! 
Ah, Makoto, Sayaka, so you two got here first, huh? How unfortunate. Too bad. I was sure I'd beat everyone here. I guess that just means I don't have enough fighting spirit yet. Well, I won't give up. Next time, I swear I'll win no matter what it takes. Justice shall always prevail. <laughs> That's a bit much, don't you think? <laughs> Soon after that, everyone else came strolling in one after another. After a few minutes, everyone had gathered in the dining hall. Okay, it looks like everyone's here. Time to start the meeting! Let's all go around and share what we found out during our respective investigations. The sooner we find out what's going on, the sooner we get out of here. Hold on a sec. What are you talking about? Hmm. What about, uh, what's her name? You know, the silver-haired girl. <gasps> uh, oh yeah, Kyoko. Hmm. What about her? Aww. She's not here. <laughs> I took another look around the dining hall. Sure enough, she was nowhere um... to be seen. I wonder where she went. Has anyone seen her? But everyone just shook their heads. Huh? Wait, so nobody's seen her? Why hasn't Kyoko shown up yet? Could it be because... Yes, indeed! Yeah, that's... <laughs> rest is up to you. Get your own emotions. Okay. Is it possible? Was she really? No, no, I'm just overthinking things. Damn it, Kyoko, you're really gonna be late like this on the first day of school? Not only is she late, she didn't tell anyone she would be late. A most unbecoming personality trait. Come on. <laughs> you're being a real jackass right now, you know that? <sighs> well, what do you want me to do? Punctuality is everything. You hear me? Now then, I declare that the first session of the Host Peak Academy briefing meetings has begun. Um... Makoto, actually, first of all, I've talked enough. Maybe we should listen to what everyone else has to say. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> hmm, you know? Hmm, what's up? <laughs> I feel like I really have become your personal assistant, don't you agree? <laughs> I may not be the best assistant in the world, but I'll give it everything I've got. No, you've already done so much as my assistant. <laughs> okay. God damn it, am I gonna have to talk to all of them again? Ah! <laughs> God damn it. I'm gonna go crazy. Oh wait, can I even? Or okay, maybe not. Maybe I can't actually talk to them. Um. Okay. Um. Okay. So since you're in the dark about all this, let me lay out what's been going on. Everyone split up to investigate different parts of the building, you but Biakia and Taka each went off on their own, and so did Kyoko. <laughs> I wanted to try and find some clue as to who's responsible for imprisoning us here, but unfortunately I made no such discoveries. That's all from me. <sighs> really? That's it? <clears throat> if I'd uncovered anything, naturally I would have more to say, but I didn't, so I don't. Uh... Right, understood. Okay. Um... You see... <laughs> hmm. I spent some time looking around the dormitory Listen and... to me! There, I made the discovery of the century. I found that there was exactly one room for each person. Uh, well, yeah, I figured that out before anything else. Yeah. Each door already has a nameplate on it, so I guess all the rooms have been assigned already. Huh. And each room key was attached to a keychain with the owner's name precision etched onto it. Which confirms that the room I was in earlier is, in fact, my room. And plus. And Shihiro and I found out that all the rooms are totally soundproof. Um... Your next door neighbor could scream their lungs out and you wouldn't hear a thing. <laughs> Well, each room also had a private bathroom, which could also lock. Hmm. But it looked like there were only locks on the bathrooms in the girls' dorms. Huh? But when I checked my bathroom door before, it definitely seemed like it was locked. That's weird. I should hey, double-check it later. On. Okay, so they got a bunch of rooms ready for us. They're assuming we're gonna be here a while. Quiet down and listen! Well, better to have than not have not. At least we don't have to worry about surviving like wild <sighs> animals. Th that can't be all you have to report, can it, Mr. Honor Student? Got it! That's all for my report. Let's move on to whoever's next. Okay. I don't think I should leave her now. The atmosphere isn't... Okay. Um... Okay. This... Wait. Can I... Is she the only one I can talk to? Right. Um... You see? Looks like... Oh, okay. We, we went all up and down the school, double-checking the windows and all the hallways and classes. 
we wanted to see if we could get any of those metal plates to come off, and what happened was hmm. nothing. Not a damn thing. We couldn't get a single one to budge, even a little what bit. What should I do? There wasn't any hope of escape anywhere. The school really has been totally cut off. This is bad. This sucks. Bad, bad, it bad, really bad, sucks. bad. <laughs> what the hell are we gonna do? Hey, come on. God damn, calm down. You're starting... Aren't there windows right fucking there? There's trees! Guys, come on! There's trees out there! Look at that! Look at that! Trees! The you could just break the window and run out! You could, like, jump outside! There's your escape right there in the dining hall! <laughs> Bruh! This window's right there! Okay. God damn, calm down. You're starting to make me nervous. <laughs> Bruh. Those are windows, bro. Although, oh, it almost looks like there might be a giant wall outside. So they may still be closed inside the school grounds, even if they leave through the window. I don't know. But, like, there's a window right there, man! Okay, anyway. Um... You see? Same goes for Hina, Sakura, and Rondo. Celeste, Toko, and Hifumi were left over, so they joined up. Hmm. <sighs> we thought maybe we could find some way to communicate with the outside, so we went looking Sorry. all over. But we didn't find a thing. Sorry. Yo. I went back to the main hall, thinking maybe we could do something about that giant hunk what? of metal. But even with Sakura what? and me both, we couldn't. it wouldn't budge. We hit it with desks and chairs and nothing. <sighs> Shit. It was hard as, like, metal. That's because yes, it is metal. indeed. <laughs> well, yes, it is metal. Oh, this anyway, sucks. Anyway, if we're going to get out of here, it's not going to be through there. Aww. I feel like I could just cry. But no, I have to hold it in. I have to manage my hydration. So then... I shall tell you what happened next. It has nothing to do with communication with the outside world, but it's still worth worrying about. In both the school and dorm areas, there was a set of stairs leading up to another floor. What? But there were gates there, and we couldn't find any way to open them, so we couldn't check it out. Hmm. In other words, at this point, we are only able to search the However... first floor. We can further assume that there is potentially something above the second floor as well. And if that's the case, there is at least a chance it may lead to a way out. Um, <sighs> you see, let's see. If I am being honest, I can't quite say we acted as one. Rather, we did nothing as one. We spent the entire time in Most the gym. Most unfortunate. Honestly, we are not exactly the types to go running around a school like a gaggle of junior detectives. What the hell's wrong with you? What the hell were you thinking, just sitting around in the gym the whole time? <clears throat> Well, it's not like any of you invited me along. Nobody said, hey, come with us. I blame you for leaving me out. It's your fault. What the? If you wanted to go with someone, you should have just said something. <laughs> Forget it. Like I'd want to go anywhere with a dirty slut like you. Huh? Slut? <laughs> your mind is as thin as your body. <laughs> oh my god. Jesus, she's like so aggressive, but at the same time, she's like stuttering. Are like you for real? I don't even know how to react. How can you say something so awful to someone you just met? Hey, come on. All right, guys, everyone just calm down, okay? This, this All the stress is bad for your skin, uh -huh. you know? Yeah, it sounds like you two are so close now that you're fighting like sisters. I don't think that's what's going on, Saika. Hey, um... So that's what they have to say, huh? <sighs> then I guess I'm the only one left. Um... I went and had a look around the dining hall. I found a fridge in the back of the kitchen, and it was overflowing with all kinds of stuff. That's good. I guess we don't have to worry about food, at least. What? Sure, for now. But even with all that, there are 15 of us. How long can the food last? <laughs> you can just eat sesame seeds or something. Hmm? Huh? What am I, a parakeet? <laughs> uh, more like a hamster, but... You know... <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about it. All the food is, gets restocked automatically each day. Um, At least that's what Monokuma said. Huh? 
You saw him? Okay. Yeah, he came out of nowhere while I was checking the fridge, told me that, then disappeared again. He was so fast, I can't believe someone could have been moving him around with a remote control. That's... A weaponized toy that can just appear from nowhere. I can't tell if we're supposed to be afraid or not. But... But was everything okay? He didn't try to, like, eat you or anything? <laughs> e eat her? Um, what do you mean by that? I mean, when you say eat, what kind of eating are you... Oh, bruh! Confirm me! What the fuck? What are you getting at? <laughs> Confirm me! That's nasty! <laughs> Bruh! <laughs> what is he referencing? <laughs> Alright. Come on, man! Hey, bastard. What the hell, fatty? You're acting like some kind of sleazy drunk dude. Actually. Not like there's a good kind of drunk dude. Hey! Hey! Stop screwing around, all of you! Are you still asleep or something? We're prisoners here! We could all just die any second! Ugh, shit. She's right. We can't be making stupid jokes right now. We gotta do something or... A voice cut through the noise, interrupting Mondo. You're all spending an awful lot of time yelling mm -hmm. and carrying on. Do you really think you can afford to do so? Have none of you accepted the reality of the situation? No. Kyoko! Where the heck have you been? We already started the meeting without you! She didn't say a word. Instead, she just dropped a piece of paper on the table. Huh? What's this? It appears to be a map of Hope's Peak Academy. A map? <laughs> what the? Where did you find this? Well, it doesn't matter where I found it. What the heck? It does matter. You're really freaking us out right oh, now. More important. Never mind that. What's it mean? It would seem... Just look at it. The building we're in right now is laid out in precisely the same way as Hope's Peak Academy. So what you're saying is this really is Hope's Peak Academy? It's true. Well, in terms of its construction, yes. But it looks like it's had a number of strange renovations done to it. However, renovations? I don't know all the details yet. All I found was details about the first floor. Um... But then, this really is Hope's Peak. We didn't get kidnapped and taken to some other place. Huh? So stupid, it's not even possible. This is where the country's future elite are supposed to come and learn? But... But if this really is Hope's Peak, where are all the other students? <sighs> hey, come on, guys. Let's just stop talking about all this, you know, negative stuff. But aren't you worried? Things don't look good. Yo! Worried? What's there to be worried about? I mean, this was all planned out, right? The people in charge of Hoax Peak put all this together, right? <laughs> I mean, if I got stressed every time something like this happened, I'd have ectoplasm sh shooting out of my mouth. <laughs> you know? Good things come to those who wait, right? So we just gotta chill and everything will work itself out. <laughs> huh. What's your problem? Why are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> I am just happy. That is all. It seems splitting up to investigate was a good idea after <sighs> all. Haven't you been listening? Looking around was a total waste of time! We didn't find a way out! Didn't find who's behind this! We still have no idea what's going on! Oh! Huh? Is it not crystal clear to you what is Are going you okay on? With this? It is perfectly obvious that we have been imprisoned in some secret location with no way out. None of us had any response to that. We didn't want to accept that reality, but it was staring us right in the mm -hmm. face. You didn't have to go and say that! I was trying not to think about it! No way out! We're trapped here! What are we supposed to do? <laughs> it's very simple. If you want to leave, you just have to kill. Stop it! Don't even joke about that! Um... Everyone just calm down, please. We need to stop and think about what to do from here. Seems like... There's gotta be something we can do. <laughs> All we can do is adapt. Adapt to living our lives here from now on. That's... Live here? Are you saying we should just accept it? Do you understand? A lack of adaptability is a lack of survivability. Survival is not based on who is the strongest or the smartest. It comes down to who can adapt. Actually... As someone who has come out on top more than once, I have a suggestion. What? Huh? What do you mean? Hmm. We all understand that we are trapped here, which means we will be spending the night. However, you all remember the rule regarding nighttime, right? Nighttime is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so please exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. Let's okay. see. So regarding this nighttime, I think we need to add a rule of our own. What do you mean? <laughs> Going out at nighttime should be prohibited altogether. The school regulations do not actually tell us to not go out at night. I would like to make it official. Uh -huh. but, but why? Are you okay with this? 
The way things are now, every time night comes, we will all start to get worried and anxious. We will all be afraid someone might try and come kill us. Huh? What? <laughs> if we have to worry about that night after night for who knows how long, it will wear us down in no time. I see. So you're suggesting we limit our activity at night as a kind of preventative measure. Indeed. However, unlike the other rules, nobody can be forced to comply. We all have to agree to what follow it. What can we it. do? I see what you mean, but I think we can agree to that. It's like the little goth Lolita said. Without something like that, we're just gonna self-destruct. Listen to me! On behalf of all the men here, I agree to comply. What? Hey, you can't just decide to speak for this us. Is fine. So everyone is in agreement. Good. <laughs> then if you will excuse me. Huh? huh? Wait, Let's where are you going? See. It is almost nighttime. I want to take a shower before it arrives. I hope you are well. So, goodbye. Moving with pure elegance, Celeste left the dining hall. Her behavior seemed so natural, I couldn't imagine anyone even trying to stop her. Um... So I guess it's pretty obvious where we go from here. We'll be spending the night, it looks like. Huh. Adaptability. Hmm. So, Mr. Chairman, what next? One person already left. <laughs> um... Well then, what say we call an end to today's meeting? You understand? Meeting? Like she said, it's almost nighttime anyway. We can reconvene first thing tomorrow morning. Huh? Do we really have to stay the night what here? What can we do? We don't have a choice. We can't go for long without getting some sleep. <sighs> so we have sucks. to just give up. <sighs> That's all fine and good for today, but what do we do tomorrow? So in the end... Our only option is to split up and look around again and let everyone know if we find anything. God damn, this is a lot of reading! <laughs> Why isn't it just voice acted? It would make my job so much easier. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Aww. Then we're done for good today. Good, I'm exhausted. Okay, with heavy movements, everyone headed off to their private um. rooms. Makoto, are you ready to call it a day? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Is this really where I'll be staying for the foreseeable future? Oh, that's right. I should check the bathroom one more time before I go to bed. Only the girls' bathroom should have locks on them, right? Alright, let's open it up. It's no use. It really is locked. Bzz. Bzz. Wrong! Not locked! <laughs> Holy crap! Jeez, talk about an overreaction! It's like you just saw a ghost or something! Like, some kind of robot bear ghost! What are you doing here? What? Makoto Naegi, this is a super duper majorly bad. So bad it's almost magical. Ultra magical off level attack. Uh -huh. I point in fact, I know, I acknowledge that the bathroom in your room has a problem with the door frame. Wait, so the reason it won't open isn't because it's locked? The door just doesn't fit? Hey, um... Didn't you see the notice? What, can't you read? The bathrooms in the boys' rooms don't have locks. <laughs> I mean, a lock on a boys' bathroom is kind of pointless, don't you think? Uh -huh. Well, it's not that it's pointless, I guess, but I'm no expert on the birds and the bees and all that. Anyway, there's a little trick to opening this particular ill-fitting door, and that's what I'm here to teach you. Okay. Ready? So you just gotta turn the doorknob, then lift up while you pull. Yes, indeed. Go ahead. Give it a try. Turn the knob and lift the door up while I pull. When I did that, the door opened without a problem. <laughs> See? It opened right up. Isn't that crazy, though? Your door's the only one that doesn't fit quite right. You're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But looks like you're not lucky at all. Anyway, I suddenly don't feel like being here anymore. Bye! <laughs> Monokuma's such a little shit. Hey, wait! <laughs> Damn it. Announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially night time. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams, everyone. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Evil teddy bear. <laughs> Looks like it's nighttime. We all promised we wouldn't leave our rooms now. All I can do now is try and get some sleep. While still mumbling to myself, I collapsed into bed. My eyes closed almost immediately. It's not that I was ready for bed, exactly. I was just utterly exhausted. It was as if I'd spent an entire day staring at a TV, watching movies, 
Or like some kind of illusion where I'd been tossed up into a made-up fantastical world. Yeah, that feels about right. <clears throat> There's no easy way to just accept the situation we've suddenly been dropped into. <laughs> so this is how the curtain closed on my first day at Hope's Peak Academy. Soon enough, I was asleep. Would it be too much to hope that when I woke up, I'd realize it was all a dream? It's kind of lame as far as endings go, but I'd be fine with that. Actually, that'd be the best. In any normal school, Mr. Monokuma would be a kind teacher, but when I think about what's coming up... I'm just so full of pride and joy. Our ceremony earlier today was absolutely splendid. Thank you all very much. Reminder that you're all students of Hoax Peak Academy and strive to refine I your swear ideals. to you, I will send you all off into a new tomorrow. God, his voice is hard to do, but I try because... Lol. <laughs> My God. Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another beautiful day! Apparently, it's morning, but thanks to the total lack of windows, there's no way to know for sure. Anyway, what should I do now? Maybe I should go find Sayaka, and we can figure out where to go from here together. She did say she's my assistant now. Okay, it's decided. I'm gonna head to her room. With a newfound determination, I left my room. Hello there, sir. Hey! Good morning, Makoto! G good morning? <laughs> yes! Morning greetings are quite a delight. Such an energizing way understand? to start the day. Now then, let's make sure we both do our very best throughout the day. Sh sure. I wonder if he's always like this. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Where is Sayaka? Sayaka. There's a doorbell next to the door. I guess I should use that. Hello. Good morning, Sayaka. Hi, Makoto. Oh, Makoto. Perfect timing, huh? Um, listen, listen, I have a favor to ask. A favor? Um, I was just getting ready to head out. If it's okay, would you like to come with me? Maybe we could talk. Yeah, sure. Where are you uh, headed? Um, oh, um, I've been thinking that there might be something around here I could use for self-defense. Self-defense? Um, well, I mean, whoever's keeping us here could show up and attack us at any time. You never know. Whoever trapped us here. Whoever presented us with rules for murdering each other. Whoever put us in this insane position. She's right. We never know when they might attack. Um, so I just want to be able to protect myself no matter what happens. A weapon to protect herself. Well, now that I think about it, that display case in the gym entryway had a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Maybe... Oh, the gym? Okay, let's go. Uh, like again? I said, I'm psychic. <laughs> Come on, I'm just kidding. Seriously, I just have amazing intuition. Am I really so easy to predict? Anyway, we should head to the gym. For anyone who just hates walking around the school, we've got some good news. You can now teleport using the map section of the handbook menu. It's as simple as opening the map menu and choosing where you want to go. However, you can only teleport to hallways and marked waypoints. Plus, you can't teleport to places you haven't been or places that are blocked off. And depending on certain story moments, there will be times where you won't be able to teleport at all. Finally, try not to teleport inside any walls. There's a chance you could get lost forever. Well then, good luck and have fun. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother with the teleportation. I'm just gonna... Yeet. Where am I going? Wait, that's the... A very strange character. <laughs> Toko together with those other two. Quite a combination. What's your problem? What do you want? You look like you have something to say. 
Oh no, I was just thinking that you three make a pretty unique team. <laughs> Let me make this perfectly clear. Me hanging out with two people who have muscles where their, their brain should be is not my choice. Just a second. Wow, that was super mean. Mm -hmm. Yesterday you were complaining how nobody invited you. That's the only reason I asked you to come with us. Mm -hmm. I never asked you to do that. Stop trying to drag me further into your meat dimension. Mm -hmm. Jeez, I can't believe she just ran off. You think we should go after her? Wait. We shouldn't pressure her any further. No. Oh yeah, good point. They're like water and oil anyway. It'd be weird if they did get along. <laughs> yeah, she's a little bit of a strange character. Uh, she, uh, she is a very strange character, and there is more to her than it looks. I've seen the anime, so I, I know what happens. <laughs> and, uh... It, 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 there's some weird shit, bro. Hey, um... Here we go. I might be able to find something here to protect myself mm. with. Yeah, I'm sure I'll find something in the display case I can use. Okay. There's like a fucking katana. It's a sword? Oh, no, I think it's just a replica. Still, it's pretty impressive. It's completely covered in gold coating, but... Jeez, I barely touched it and I got that gold stuff all over my hands. Uh, um... Wow, you're right. Your hands are totally gold. Even just for self-offense, I think it's a little... Well, it's still better than nothing, hey, I guess. Um... You should take it with you. It might help liven up your room a little. You think so? <laughs> but I guess you'd better be careful taking it back. You should wrap it in newspaper or something. <laughs> and just like that, it's been decided. Hmm. I don't see anything I could really use for self-defense. Hey, don't worry about it. It's not like you need it anyway, right away, right? Plus, if anything were to happen, when the time comes, I'll protect huh? you. You'll protect me? <laughs> Thank you for saying that. If I've got you on my side, I guess I don't need a weapon after all. Sayaka giggled as she said that. That mysterious smile. I can tell it comes from the heart. Makes me feel at ease. When I look at her, I honestly feel like I can do anything. <laughs> Okay, we can stop looking for a weapon then, but as long as we're here, let's hang out a bit more. I have a feeling you're not going to be alive for very long. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Hello there. Um... um. I know I said I wanted to talk to you, but now that we're here, I don't really know sorry. what to talk about. And I was the one who invited you to come with me, sorry. It's okay. I mean, if there's nothing to talk about, then we can just not talk, huh? right? Huh? You don't have to force yourself to talk. We can just, I don't know, stare off into space or whatever. Hmm. Stare off into space? Oh, but you're probably super bored, just standing around doing nothing. Uh, um, no, it's not that it's boring. It's just, I... I've never really done it before. I don't have a lot of time to just do nothing. I guess that makes sense. You're not a normal high school student like me. You've got tons of stuff to do every day. Um, listen. Hey, um, this is kind of out of nowhere, but... Makoto, do you have a dream? <laughs> well, what about you, Sayaka? What's your dream? I'd love to hear. I... My dream is... I've always wanted to be a star, as long as I can remember. I grew up without a mother, you know? And my dad worked really late every night. I was always home alone. I was just a kid, you know? So I was really lonely. But that all changed when I saw a pop star on TV for the first time. She was so pretty, like a princess, and she could sing and dance. <laughs> but more than anything else, there was her smile. Looking at her smile, I could feel my loneliness melting away. I decided that's what I wanted to be someday. I wanted to give that kind of encouragement to others. <laughs> Eventually, that became my dream. That's so amazing, though. You were able to actually fulfill your lifelong dream. Honestly, it's really incredible. I... I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it. Even some things that weren't so pleasant. Huh? You see? I honestly believed that as long as you kept chasing your dreams, someday they had to come true. But to do that, you can't take your eyes off of your dream. Not even for a second. Even if sometimes it's a bad dream. Whether you're awake, whether you're asleep. To make your dream a reality, you have to keep your gaze fixed on it no matter um... what. In that world, if you lose focus for even a split second, you get left behind. You have to keep on swimming against the current without even taking time to breathe. That's the kind of world my dream lives in. Is it really that tough? Is it not fun oh, at no. all? Oh no, don't get the wrong idea. It's super what? fun. But that's exactly what scares me, huh? Uh, um... I enjoy every single day I get to wake up and do what I do. Everyone in our group is amazing. We're rivals in a way, but they all mean so much to me. 
We've been performing together since we were young, so they're all like family to me. Without them, I would have given up on my dream a long time ago. To work together and fulfill our dreams together has brought me so much happiness. But that's why... But that's the thing that scares me the most. If the world gets tired of us, then what happens? What happens to us? Then the dream dies. Those wonderful days come to an end and everyone goes their separate ways. S Sayaka. She's trembling. She must be terrified. We work so hard. Sacrifice so much to get to where she is. She must be terrified of losing you it. You see? So that's the reason I decided to come to Hope's Peak. Huh? What do you uh, mean? Um... Well, they say that if you graduate from here, success is basically guaranteed. Which means I could keep on performing with my best friends forever and ever. At least, that's what I thought. I really did believe that, but now we're trapped here with no way out. They're probably waiting for uh, me. Uh, While I'm in here, the world out there is forgetting about me. Minute by minute, we're all disappearing. But still, Sayaka, why? I can't why? afford to be stuck in here. That was the first time I heard her cry out from deep within herself. She sounds desperate. But I can understand why she'd feel that way. Trapped here this way, the dream she put so much effort into is on the verge of disappearing forever. And that isn't something that can be fixed with a few kind words. The way she's caring, I can't even imagine it. Sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean uh, to complain. Um... I kind of killed the moon, huh? No, not at all. Sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, Sayaka. Actually, are you hungry? Before we head back, why don't we go to the dining hall and get some food? So... Okay! You want me to make us something to eat? I might not look like it, but I'm actually a pretty good cook. Wow, really? What's your specialty? Chili oil. You mean the condiment? <laughs> Just kidding. She burst out laughing, her earlier mood disappeared, replaced by the bright smile I'd quickly grown used to. But how'd it happen so fast? It was almost like a mask, like some kind of neutral expression. Anyway, we headed to the dining hall to get something to eat, before returning to our rooms. The only thing in my room is a fake sword covered in gold. All it does is make me feel that much more uncomfortable. Anyway, there's still plenty of time left in the day. I really don't feel like just sitting here. Maybe I'll take a look around. You're about to have your first experience with free time. Would you like to hear more? Uh, sure, why not? As you live out your school life here, you will be given free time at certain points. During your free time, you can spend time with your fellow classmates to deepen your friendships. You can also get them presents, which can potentially give them an even better impression of you. You can get these presents from the mono, mono, mono machine in the school store. Come by early and often. At certain points, you'll witness intimate events and new info will be added to each person's report card. These events can also open up new skills, which will prove useful as everything plays out. We strongly encourage you to develop and deepen as many friendships as you can. Also keep in mind that as when you talk with a classmate, time will pass. When you're finished, you will automatically return to your room. After a certain amount of time passes, your free time will come to an end and the story will progress. If you'd prefer not to engage in free time, you can always choose to simply go to sleep to skip it. We've written recommend this approach, but if you absolutely must press forward in the story, then anyway, why don't you try it out by spending some time with Miss Sayaka Maizono? She's the ideal partner to begin with, don't you think? Okay. Cool. Now... Well, the only thing in my room is a fake sword covered in gold. <laughs> All it does is make me... Okay, yeah, I already touched that. Um, now going to check on something real quick and oh hello I just noticed someone did the why did my twitch chat overlay not show that message hello there Rocky Mountain High <laughs> for some reason I, I maybe you posted it while I was AFK I, I don't know but it, it my twitch chat overlay didn't pop up I missed that damn okay <laughs> Are my groceries here yet? I just remembered the fact that I ordered Instacart, like, a few hours ago. <laughs> see if my shit's here. Shit, I ordered is... Let's see. Okay, so... Orders... Okay, you order detail. 
Okay, yeah, it was delivered. So, wait, what? Oh, are you kidding? Of course they replaced my order with something that I don't even like. Of course they did. It's not that that- well, I don't know if they delivered it to the wrong house yet. I'm gonna have to go out and look and see if- see where it is, but um... They replaced one of the items I ordered with something spicy that I'm not going to like. Which means now I have to demand a refund because they wasted my money. God damn it. I am so tired of people doing that. They didn't even, you know, contact and ask me if about replacing that. God damn it. Hold on. Uh God damn it. Let me let me deal with this Instacart shit real quick. <laughs> Then I'll go grab the groceries, and then I'll be back in, in the game. Yeah, they, they didn't. They just replaced it. Because of course they did. It's fucking Instacart. God damn it. Well, at least I got a refund for the wrong item. Okay, well, I will be right back while I go and uh, get the shit that they did deliver correctly. Uh, and I may make myself some coffee because I ordered a new coffee mug. We have no fucking water right now because our pipes are... Um, our pipes are shit because of the freeze that happened. So currently my water is turned off so I can't wash dishes. So, I literally just had to, like, buy a new coffee mug to have coffee because I can't wash my- the one that I was using. So... Big rip. Anyway. I will, uh... Be right back. Let me turn on the- there we go.
Okay. I return. I I am back. Wait, low battery. What what do you mean low battery? Okay. Now uh how many people are still here? <laughs> Is anyone who was actually chatting still here? <laughs> Hello there. Ye <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> All right, let's see. No, no, I don't want to click on that again. Oh my god. All right. Door. Let's leave. Leave the area. Yes. <laughs> this uh, this game, man, is uh. This game is very fun, but it is also very fucked up. Alright, let's see. Where the fuck is, uh, what's her face? Sayaka! Sayaka, where are you? Are you in here? Um, who is You know, Makoto, I am so anxious, I really am afraid. Hmm, should I talk to Sayaka for a while? Spend some time with Sayaka? Um... Are you going to try and cheer me up? Sorry. Sorry for making you take time out of your day like this. I did my best to comfort Sayaka. Sayaka and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Sayaka a present? Do I have a present to give her? Uh. I don't have any presents. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure she's gonna die soon, so. <laughs> No, wait, no. Ah, fuck you, goddammit! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> there we go. Um. Makoto, do you think you could make time for the two of us to talk? W what's wrong? Why are you being so formal? I... Well, it's just, I guess that was kind of formal, but it's just because I know I can count on you. <laughs> what is that, Jif? I can't even get a good look at it, but it looks like some kind of kind of VR avatar fucking around. I don't know. <clears throat> it's just because I know I can count on you, huh? <laughs> Having you by my side really makes me feel a lot better. Uh, um, if you weren't here with me, I just don't know what I'd do. I'd be lost. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, even as how tiny it is, I'm like, that almost looks like one of my my avatars. But I can't tell because it's too damn small. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. If you weren't here with me, I just don't know what I'd do. I'd be lost. But that's why... I hate that we had to meet again under such awful conditions, but I'm relieved you're with me. Ah. Gotcha. All right. Sayaka, standing here face to face and hearing her say that. It's nice, but kind of embarrassing at the same time. I know how you feel. You being here is what saved me. Ah. R really? <laughs> Thank you for the flattery. That smile. That mysterious smile that softens my heart. I've, it really wasn't flattering her. That smile saved me. Hmm. But it's kind of strange, you know? I never thought I'd get a chance to really talk to you like this. All through middle school, you never talked to me. In fact, you never even looked at me. It's because you were like a celebrity. I couldn't just go around staring at you. Wait, how do you know I never hey, looked at you? Um, because I looked at you all the time. Huh? I... I was always looking for an opportunity to talk to you. You wanted to talk to me? But... but since I always had so many people around me, we ended up graduating without saying a word. That was one of my biggest regrets. But why me? Um... Do you remember during our first year of junior high, that huge bird wandered into the school pond? Actually, now that I think about it, I do sort of remember something like that. Mm. It was like out of a fairy tale. The turtle, once every million years, the bir that bird, once every thousand. A huge bird wandered into the school pond during our first year of junior high. I think it might have been... Uh, sparrow, probably. A uh, sparrow, hey, right? Um... But sparrows were really common around there, right? <laughs> Oh, but sparrows do show up in all kinds of fairy tales, like that one, the tongue-cut sparrow. 
Yeah, true. <sighs> but no, the bird we saw that day was a lot bigger. A huge bird wandered in the school pond to our first year at junior high. It might have been... Oh, a heron. Oh no! No, not quite. <laughs> like a heron, but bigger than it had to be... <laughs> a crane. <laughs> it was a crane! It just walked right into the pond. Okay. That's right, that's what it was. It was so big, the teacher had no idea what to do. But you led it into the forest behind the school. You helped it find its way out. Well, only because I was already in charge of taking care of the animals at school. They made me do it. You see? I should have said thank you then, but is it okay if I do it now? Thank me? I... I'm that crane, you see? I've come to return the favor. Here, let me make you a cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I kind of figured. Honestly, though, I was so impressed. That's why I always wanted to talk to you, even just once. Uh, um... I never imagined this would be how I got my chance. Yeah, if we'd met again at a train station somewhere downtown, that'd make for a nice dramatic reunion. <laughs> Copy. <laughs> but instead, it's this weird school. I... Maybe, but still. I'm sure you'll help me find my way out, just like that crane. You'll save me. You see? It's just intuition, I know, but I still believe it. I'm going to save her? I'll do my best, I promise that. I'll make sure it's more than just intuition. If there's anything I can do, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I believe in you. Besides, my intuition always turns out to be right. Like I said, I'm Cause psychic. Because I'm psychic. Because I'm psychic. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. She laughed out loud as she said it. The closer we get, the stronger that smiles of hers makes me. I was glad to feel that way. Sayaka's report card has been updated based on your experience with her. You just unlocked the skill Melodious Voice. Give yourself a pat on the back. You've earned it. <laughs> okay. Once we were all done, I headed back to my room for a little while. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. <clears throat> this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m. As such, it is officially nighttime. Soon the doors to the dining hall will be locked, and entry at that point is strictly prohibited. Okay then, sweet dreams everyone. Good night, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Ball. <clears throat> Oh, right, I'm supposed to be reading. <laughs> the pressure she's under is way different from anything a normal high schooler like me goes through. She didn't just stumble into the school the way I did. So I can't f say I feel the things the way she does. Compared to her? No, compared to everyone else here. There's no doubt I just don't match up. I guess that might explain my own frustration. <laughs> I'm gonna kill my voice at this rate, goddamn. <laughs> Ahem. So, I'm sure that you've noticed the killing game has begun, but there's still room for a little laughter. It seems our newest students, already so filled with despair, still have some hope of escape. I'm not going to do the Monokumata voice here. <laughs> so, when will it begin? When will their hope begin to die? Is it time yet? Is it time? Heart-pounding excitement! Yeah. Monokuma's voice in particular is like... It's, it's fun to do, but it's also hard, and I don't actually know how it sounds to you guys, and if it's fucking annoying with my microphone. Because, <laughs> like, I, I don't, because the microphone, my voice doesn't sound the same on recording as I hear it in real life. So it's like, I don't know if the voices I'm doing are actually just fucking, like, gratingly annoying or not. <laughs> Especially with Monokuma's, because Monokuma is, uh, he, he's a bit of a diff difficult character. He's got that, like, high-pitched fucking, like, <laughs> I don't know. The Monokuma voice is, uh... <laughs> Good morning, everyone! It is now 7 a.m., and nighttime is officially over! Time to rise and shine! Get ready to greet another bee! Day. Gosh, I'm gonna watch back this recording and I'm gonna be like I'm, I'm probably gonna cringe 
when I get to the part where I'm like reading as Monokuma, cause I'm <laughs> like cringing at my own Monokuma voice, cause it probably sucks. <laughs> Morning has come. What should I do today? Oh, it's free time. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, let's see. Yay! <laughs> Leave the area. Yes. Alright, where am I gonna go? Um, okay. Oh, hi, Sayaka. You see? Oh, Makoto, you wanted me? <laughs> just kidding. Hmm, should I talk to Sayaka for a while? Yeah, sure, let's just fuck around with Sayaka. <sighs> I, I I have a bad feeling about what's, what's gonna happen soon, because, like, uh, obviously, someone's gonna die soon, right? But, like, I, I've watched the anime, but it has been so long since I've watched it that I barely remember what actually happens in what order. So, I, I don't remember which character is the first to die. I don't remember which character is the first to kill someone. I don't remember who kills who or whatever the fuck is supposed to happen. Uh, so I'm like, hmm, how long are you gonna be alive? Because I'm pretty sure you die at some point. But I don't know when, <laughs> and I don't know what this- I don't remember what the situation is either, so I'm like, hmm, hmm, I'm a little, <laughs> a little, like, a little sus. Alright. Oh, you want to talk for a bit? Sure, that sounds nice. <laughs> I spent time chatting with Sayaka. Sayaka and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Sayaka a present? Not really, no, I don't have a present. There's still lots of time left in the day. Really don't feel like just sitting here. Maybe I'll take a look around. Okay. Let's go. Leave the area. Yes. Hmm. Let's see. Who else should I talk to? Um. Yeah, let's talk to the weirdo. The, the little stuttery girl here. <laughs> Leave me alone. You don't have to pay attention to me. Hmm, should I hang out with Toko for a while? Yeah, sure. She's cringe, but just do whatever you want. I spent some time with Toko. Toko and I grew a little closer today. Would you like to give Toko a present? No, I don't have a present. She's not- she's just standing there. Does she want something? But she's not saying anything. Maybe I should try to start a conversation. Um, Toko? <laughs> what? You wanted to talk to me? Well, I can't stop you, so talk already! Okay, sure, but what should I say? So, uh, what do you like to do in your spare time? <laughs> Why do you want to know? Well, I mean, you know, we're trapped here together, right? If we're gonna be friends, it'd be nice to get to know each other. <laughs> huh? What'd you just say? Um, <laughs> after that part about being trapped, we're gonna be what? Uh, friends? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, friends? You think I'm stupid? You're trying to trick me! <laughs> I've already been hurt once before! I'm not gonna let it happen again! You've been hurt? What happened? Anyway... Come on, you don't really care about me. You don't want to know about me. Even I know that. N no, that's not true. <laughs> Fine, what then the tell me. Tell you what. <laughs> you know that why they call me the ultimate writing prodigy, right? Yeah, sure, you've won all kinds of literature prizes and stuff. <laughs> then tell me what I'm good at. Tell me what my genre specialty is. If you really want to convince me you give a crap, you should at least know that. The genre that the ultimate writing prodigy specializes in is... Romance. In romance, of course. Oh, you actually knew? Your biggest success was Soul Lingers the Ocean, right? Everyone says it's your masterpiece. The book was such a hit that fishermen shot to the top of all the hottest men poles, right? How did you know all that? There's no way you could care about me. I'm telling you, I do. I mean, we're friends, aren't we? I'm blind! Your straightforward nature blinded me! <laughs> She's kind of... Toko ran off screaming like a banshee. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Does she hate me now? Toko's report card has been updated based on your experience with her. You just unlocked the skill vocabulary. Give yourself a pat on the back. You've earned it. Yeah, Toko is a bit of a weird character, but she's kind of funny. <laughs> Once we were all done, I headed back to my room for a while. Oh, man, it's night again. Alright. <sighs> <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. 
the doors to the di- Okay then. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard that before. Shut up, Monokuma. The third day here has already come to an end. When will I- No, we. When are we gonna get out of here? <clears throat> Never! <laughs> I laid on my bed and stared blankly at the ceiling. And before I knew it, I'd fallen into an uneasy sleep. I need an immediate, fast-acting pick-me-up. If it doesn't act now, it's the same as giving in to regret. What do you think guides the world? Speed, of course. That's why Formula One drivers are so popular. Any idiot can accomplish something if they take it slow. Even a human piece of excrement could create a masterpiece if they spent their entire life on it. Someone who does things in a timely fashion is both wise and admirable. Straight is better than a curve or an angle. Freestyle is better than the backstroke or breaststroke. Drive through is better than sit down. A Sunday comic artist is smarter than a graphic novelist. What I'm saying is, speed is the gold standard of the standard world. Which is why I said I need that pick me up. Meanwhile, 0 0.00002 seconds later. an evil teddy bear. Good morning, everyone! Get ready to gr- Okay. I woke up to the irritating sound of Monokuma's voice. I slowly pulled myself out of bed. Another night of restless sleep. Day after day, I can feel the fatigue piling up. As soon as the thought had crossed my mind, the sound of the doorbell forced its way into my room. Okay. Just answer the doorbell. Hey! A fantastic morning, isn't it? Taka? Hmm. Now then, if you'll pardon the interruption, without waiting for a reply, Taka barged into my room. Okay. What do you want? What's up, Taka? No matter how intensely the stormy seas may batter me, I will not fall as long as my feet are firmly planted. You agree, right? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Without a doubt. And if you can't do it alone, just find someone to support you and you can support them back. You hear me? That's how you can overcome any storm. I was thinking about it last night, and I decided we really need to come together. And that was when I realized, every morning from now on, after the morning announcement, everyone should have breakfast together. Quiet down and and now is the beginning of that fateful day. Please head to the dining hall at your earliest convenience. Got it! That's all for now. I have to go let everyone else know the good news. Taka didn't even wait for a reply. He turned and left before I could say a thing. Well, guess I better head to the dining hall. Alright. Okay. Hello there, Toko. Hi, I'm gonna go harass you. Hi, hello. Um, Toko? What? what? Uh, I was just wondering what you were doing here. You should probably head to the dining hall, right? <laughs> uh, I know, I just need to prepare myself mentally. Prepare herself? What is she talking about? <laughs> ah, I'm so nervous. <laughs> what you so nervous about? Toko is a, uh, she's an interesting character, if I remember correctly about her. <laughs> she, uh... <laughs> Wait, dining hall? Where's the dining hall? Cub. Dining hall. Uh, oh, wait. Is it? No, it's not there. Where's the dining hall? Um. Oh. It's down there. I'm an idiot. Wait. Hi, Makoto! Good morning to you, Makoto! She can make even a basic greeting feel eloquent somehow. That's the power of a celebrity, I guess. Hey, um... Is everything okay? Uh, oh yeah, good morning, Sayaka. Okay. Hello. What's your problem? What's the point of talking to me? Taka's the one who got everyone together. Go talk to him if you have questions or whatever. Okay. Whatever. Listen to me! Okay, looks like everyone's here. So then, let's begin our very first breakfast meeting. Quiet down and listen! Everyone... Thank you for making time in your busy schedules to come Give together. Me a break. 
I didn't make time for shit. You dragged me here. <laughs> I know I already mentioned this earlier, but in order to get out of here, it is essential that we all cooperate with each other. And the first step is this breakfast meeting to allow us to become friends and build trust. So from now on, let's all meet here in the dining hall every morning after the morning announcement. Now then, let's eat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want me to eat breakfast with other people? I've never done that before. I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, seriously? Yeah, it's been a while for me, too. But more important... Well, anyway, did anyone happen to come up with any clues? Silence echoed throughout the dining hall. Seriously? Nothing at all? Hey! <laughs> anything. It can be about how to get out or who's doing this. Nobody has anything? Are you okay with this? You are going to die. Huh? Huh? Do you understand? If you can't stop yourself from showing weakness in front of others, you will die. Stop it! W what the hell? Don't even freaking joke about that! <laughs> I am not joking. Adaptability is survivability. Did I not say so? So you'd better hurry up and adapt to your new life here. What the hell is this? Have you gone completely insane? Adapt to my new life here? Do you have any idea what you're saying? What? Yeah, sound like the what? girl wants to live here. And hell, more power to her. But shit. Piece of shit! No way in hell am I living here. I'm getting out of here. I don't give a shit. <laughs> mm, sure, feel free. Huh, uh... Okay, so nobody has any clues? What the heck? One thing I can tell you is who's behind all this. Someone who's totally weird and messed up. Why else would we be trapped here in the first place? Hey, listen. Well, sure, it could be something like that. For But for right now, actual clues uh, are... Um... um... Huh. Huh. What's up? Um. If you think in terms of people who are really abnormal or bizarre, do you think maybe the person responsible for all of this could be a certain murderous fiend? <laughs> a murderous fiend? Chihiro, do you have some idea who might be behind all this? Mm. Well, maybe. I mean, I can't really be certain, but. Got it! Certainty is not a concern right now. I'll allow whatever remarks you may you have. Uh, okay, well. Have you guys heard of Genocide Jack? <laughs> you mean that serial killer that's been in the news and all over the internet? <laughs> the monstrous villain who's murdered scores of victim in true, brutally bizarre fashion? The word bloodlust was left at each murder scene, written in the victim's own blood? Whoever it is, he's like a ghost. He strikes without warning and disappears without a trace. <laughs> I know who it is! <laughs> I know who Genocide Jack is. I've seen the anime. <laughs> And on the internet, they started calling him <laughs> Genocide Jack. That about covers it, I think. <sighs> they say he's claimed over a thousand victims. Mm. That's just an urban legend, though, right? I mean, like, ten people would be totally insane. Toko's like, mm. what? <laughs> anyway, whoever Genocide Jack really is, he's obviously some kind of super crazy killer. Huh? And if he really is this ultimate psycho, I wouldn't be surprised if he put together something like what? this. But, like I said, I can't be certain. I don't have any evidence or anything, it's just a thought. Hey, hold on! But if they're the killer, isn't that like a killer of a problem for us? Yeah! It's okay, everything's absolutely, positively, 100% without a doubt gonna be okay. Cause help's gonna be here soon, I'm sure of it. Huh? <laughs> help? Cause, I mean... We've been stuck in here for a few days already, right? Nobody's been able to contact us, so I'm sure they're getting worried. I bet they called the police ah! already. <laughs> What's this? The police? You're putting your faith in the police? <laughs> Bastard! What are you doing here? You guys. Seriously? Do you understand what role the police exist to fill? All they're good for is being a foil, playing against a villain or an anti-hero or evil organization. The bad guys come along and destroy them, and that shows just how badass they really are. <laughs> are you sure you want to rely on such an unreliable group of losers? <laughs> I mean, come on! If you really, really want to get out of here, all you gotta do is kill! <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing the I'm not doing the full on straight up like serious Monokuma voice. My my throat is already dying from doing that earlier. Haha! <laughs> -ha. What the hell? Why the hell are you laughing? You know? I'm just impressed at the total commitment to this whole act. Come on. You're still going on about that? You're fucking dead. So, Mr. Serial Killer Psycho Freak Bastard, what the hell do you huh? want? Mr. Serial Killer Psycho Freak Bastard, huh? That's a pretty long name. German, maybe? <laughs> hey, come on. We know who you really are. Maybe if I ignore him, he'll just go away. 
<laughs> you son of a bitch! Hey, don't ignore me, asshole! Hmm. Okay, okay, let's get back to business. Your life here has already begun, and a couple days have gone by, and nobody's killing anybody. Hmm. I thought all you kids were lazy and selfish, and here you're, you were working together, but I'm totally bored. There's nothing you can say that'll make us start killing each other. I got it! Wait, I think, yes! Ding, 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 I figured it In out! In other words... All the mystery ingredients are right here, right people, right place, so why hasn't anyone killed anyone yet? That's what I couldn't understand, but I just realized there was one very important piece missing. What are you? Ding. If you want to know, I'll tell you. It's motive. <laughs> it's so simple. I just have to give everyone a motive. Stop fucking around. Motive? What the fuck are hey, you talking about? Um... Oh, by the way, there's something I want to show you guys. You son of a bitch. Stop changing the goddamn subject. Hmm. I have a little video I'd like you Ooh, all to see. Oh, but don't worry. It's not some pervy adult video or anything. Seriously, it's nothing like that. It's a special video for each of you showing what's going on outside the school. Outside the school? What are you talking Hello. about? <laughs> Oh, Master's so impatient today. Why don't you just watch it and find out? Hmm. Here in the school, there's a specific place you can go that has everything you need to watch the Correct. video. Good, then we can go watch the video right now. But before the, we do hmm. that, I'd like to know, what are you? Why would you do something like this? What do you want from us? Hmm? What do I want from you? Well, if you must know... Despair, that's all. Well now, if you want to know more than that, you'll have to figure it out for yourselves. Mm. Do whatever you need to uncover the mystery hidden within the school. I won't try and stop you. Because <laughs> to be honest, it's entertaining as heck watching you guys search so desperately for answers. <laughs> so I guess I want amusement from you too. Um. He's gone. And once again, he left before we could find out anything useful. <laughs> Is that right? Really, I think we learned something very useful. He has no intention of standing in the way of our pursuit of the truth. Interesting. However... Perhaps, but what about the video he mentioned? I'm very curious to see what's on it. That's true. Same here. Okay, so... Mundo started glancing around the dining hall, but when his gaze landed on me, he stopped. Hell yeah! Hey, Makoto, check this out for us, would you? Huh? No. Why me? Because you're closest to the door. That's the rule, right? Rule? Jesus Christ. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Piece of hey! shit! Hey! You see how around. passionately I'm begging you? What's the big deal? Just check it out real quick. Uh, okay, I guess I'll get Hell going yeah. then. yeah. Awesome, thanks. I owe you one. Hey, um... If Makoto's going, I'm going with him. It's not safe to walk around this place alone. Yo. Yeah, sure thing. Then we're counting on the both of you. If anything happens, just yell and I'll come running. Um... Can't decide if Mondo is totally dependable or completely terrible. Yeah, I'd have to say he's kind of both. He's not exactly a bad person, but I definitely can't say he's a good person either. Mm. So then, where's this specific place Monokuma mentioned? It must be somewhere you can watch DVDs, but if it's a place set up to watch DVDs, then... Yeet. Uh, let's see, it's probably on the first floor. All right, let's see. Yeet, is this it? Got like the video player symbol on it. Next to the monitor is a high-end DVD player. Should be able to play DVDs, but I don't see any actual discs nearby. A DVD player is useless by itself. If we had something to watch, at least that'd help pass the time. Um. Wait. Um. Wait a minute. Did, don't we have the thing? Surveillance camera. I hate the idea that someone might be watching me right now. I have to keep in mind that it's against school regulations to mess with any of the cameras. As much as it gets my my nerves, I better leave it alone. What's in here? Huh? There's something inside this cardboard box. It's a bunch of DVDs, and each one has a label on it with someone's name. This must be the video for each of us he mentioned. Uh, hold on a second. I better go tell everyone. She just ran off. I didn't follow after her. I just stood right there where I was. 
The DVDs in front of me had robbed me of all awareness. I was rooted in place. I think I see something. Maybe I'll just watch mine real quick before everyone else gets here. I sorted through the DVDs I'd found in the box and found the one with my name on it. Then I slid it into the expensive looking plate thing. I sat down and stared intently at the darkened screen and then... <gasps> I yelled out without realizing it and my heart started racing because what I saw on that monitor was it was my family. You getting picked to attend Hope's Peak Academy is like a dream come true. Make sure you do your best. I'm so proud of you, son. But remember, don't push yourself too hard. Are you really watching this, Makoto? Good luck, okay? If it had ended there, that would have been fine. A message of love and support. After leaving my family behind to attend Hope's Peak, it would have given me hope, given me strength. If this was a normal school, I would have been happy, if a little embarrassed. With my family's support to rely on, I would have been motivated to do even better. But here, now, it was totally different. I wasn't living in an ordinary school life. So I had a pretty strong feeling that the video wasn't going to end there. I hated having that feeling, but it turned out I was absolutely right. This time, I couldn't even make a sound. My voice just died. Where'd everyone go? It looks like a war zone or something. As if in reply, a voice came floating out of the speakers. I recognized the voice, of course. It Makoto was him. Makoto Naegi, accepted into Hope Peak Academy, and his family, who supported such a lucky boy. But it seems like something's happened to this family's well-being. Oh boy, this is bad. What could have possibly happened to this family's well-being? What is this? What happened to everyone? I started trembling. I could feel the fear and anger building up inside of me, like hot magma. God damn it! I slammed my fist against the desk over and over again. A single thought was racing through my mind. What else? How could I think about anything else? I have to get out of here. I have to get out right now. I need to make sure everyone's safe. Um. Makoto? What happened? Make sure who's safe. I noticed everyone standing around the entrance to the AV room. They stared at me, faces full of confusion. Um. Well, what's going on? Without a word, I pointed to the cardboard box. Is it like... Is that what Monokuma was talking about? What does this mean? What's on them? They all gathered around the box and each of them grabbed the DVD with their name on it. One by one, they each rushed to a monitor. It didn't take long for them to react. What the? What the fuck? Huh? This can't be real, right? It has to be fake, right? Hey, hold yeah, on. Yeah, no way it's real. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I can't take this anymore. Let me out of here. As soon as I saw their reactions, I knew they'd all seen something like what I'd seen. Nobody even bothered trying to hide their fear and confusion. Except for her. Even now, she I was totally see. calm. I see. So this is what he meant by motive. He wants to fuel our desire to leave so that we're more likely to start killing each other. Yes, indeed. It is the classic prisoner's dilemma. Hmm? Huh? Hmm. Let me use an example. Imagine two countries are on the brink of war, but both countries want peace and each commits to scaling back their forces as a side of good faith. But there's a chance that one country may betray the other, so each country fears lowering their guard. The result is that neither scales back their forces and they both end up betraying Do each other. Do you understand? In other words, the fear in of invisible treachery becomes the greatest enemy of civility. <laughs> that kind of sounds like us right now. Everyone says they'll work together, but in our hearts we're all afraid someone might betray us. <laughs> Don't put those awful thoughts in our head. That's exactly what they want us to do. Huh? You can say that, but maybe you're thinking that once everyone drops their guard, you can just... What? 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 Hey. This is exactly what Monokuma or whoever's behind this wants. They want us to fight, don't you see? <laughs> yeah, you're right. We all need to calm down. So then. Okay, then. Maybe we should start by all just talking. Maybe if we all just talk about what we saw, that'll help get everything out of our system. Hmm. Besides, I think we're all super curious, right? I wonder what was in everyone's videos. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Hey, Sayaka. 
dot dot dot. What was in your video, Sayaka? What's your problem? What's wrong? Just hurry up and tell us! Sayaka? I gently placed my hand on her shoulder. Stop it! She pushed my hand away and suddenly ran huh? off. Sayaka? That's enough. Let her go. I, I can't do that. I have to go make sure she's okay. <laughs> I hate romantic comedies like this. I don't care what happens to her personally. What? That's because you're totally thoughtless. Um... I'm really worried. <sighs> then why don't you go and do whatever you think you have to? We don't all have to stick around together, right? I hope you are well. Speaking of which, I have my own things to take care of. Goodbye. Everyone went their separate ways. But I don't have time to worry about them right now. I have to go find Sayaka. Okay. Alright, well. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go find Sayaka. Where could she have gone? She can't have gone far. I should check around the school. Alright. Well, there's her. Okay, well... How do I get to the dormitories? Cause I'm imagining she probably went up there. Spirit Hotel, okay wait. Sayaka's in her room. Sayaka? No answer. I guess I'll have to keep looking. Okay, so she's not in her room. Sayaka, where are you? Monitors, wanna come up here's on, okay. Cool. 
Alright, Sayaka, where the hell you at? She <laughs> Bruh Sayaka, where are you? Okay, where did she go? Do you know where she um, went? Anyway, that video was pretty convincing. I almost thought it was real. I mean But it's fake, right? It's gotta be. I'd like to believe that, but if it was real Yeet. Alright, where the fuck did Sayaka go? Come on. corner of an empty classroom. She was sitting in a chair, hands on her knees, staring absently at the floor. She looked like maybe she was upset or angry or no. She didn't have any expression at all. There was nothing on her face that you could call emotion. It was as if her original mask had been stripped away. Sayaka, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Actually, no. How could I possibly be fine? What did we do to end up like this? Why are they doing such terrible things to us? I Why? want out! Let me out of here right now! Sayaka, calm down. As she thrashed around, I grabbed her by the shoulders. Huh? I understand. I know how you feel right now. When I think what might have happened to my family. But now more than ever, we have to stay calm. This is exactly what they want. They want us to lose our composure and stop thinking rationally. Think about it. Those videos have to be fake. Because if those things really had happened... People out there would be in an uproar. Our families, the police, everyone, right? So let's just calm down, okay? Otherwise, we've already lost. I knew I was trying to convince myself just as much as her. I kept repeating those words to myself to clear away the images that had been burned into my brain. Be calm, okay? Just be calm. As long as we work together, I'm sure we can find some way out of here. And help might even come uh, before that. Uh, but what if there isn't a way out? What if help never comes? If that happens, then I'll get you out of here myself, no matter what it takes. When I said that, I paused. I had no idea what had come over me. Sayaka? Please, help me. Her voice was small and shaky. Why? Why is this happening to me? To kill or be killed? I just can't take this anymore. Sayaka. <gasps> Finally, she raised her face up from my chest. She looked at me with those big, wet eyes of hers. Makoto! Can I... can I believe what you said? Huh? That you'll help me get out? No matter what it takes? Absolutely. Makoto! Makoto, you're the only one I can trust, so no please... No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I need you on my side. <laughs> huh? Of course I'll be there for you. No matter what, I'm always on your side. I mean, you are my assistant after all. Makoto. Thank you, Makoto. Hearing you say that, I feel like I can keep going. Why the hell is my phone, like, not charging? Okay. Hearing you say that, I feel like I can keep going. I... I can get through this as long as you're here with me. Because I'm your assistant. Like you said, I'm your assistant. The smile I'd come to know so well returned to her face. I felt a little forced, but still... 
It was a huge improvement over how she was before. Hey! Hey! It's standing up! Ah. Kya! <sighs> Makoto, it's standing up! What's standing up? Come on! Do you even have to ask? Yes. You're a yes. flagpole! Get the hell out of Just here! Just a minute! No! No! I want to join in! Damn it! Well, if you won't leave, then tell us what the video is up with those videos. <sighs> ah! It's about to come out! It's gonna come out! <laughs> the end you would do! Bruh! Monica, but no! Stop! Yeah. I balled up my fist, took aim, and swung as hard as I could. I had never put so much energy into a single motion before in my life. I leaned back, channeling all my power, and let go with everything I had. Ah. Hmm. If I hadn't avoided your punch, you would have just violated hey. school regulations. But boy, are you slow! <laughs> I could have downed a thousand dollar full course dinner in the time it took you to finish your swing. Your speed, agility, alertness, passion, boldness, sense of despair, antagonization, it's all lacking. Cameras and fix that. Um, what the heck was that just now? He just wanted to mess with us. Uh, um, well, for now, you want to just head back? Yeah. <laughs> Monokuma had come along and swiftly destroyed the good mood we just created. Sayaka and I headed back to the dorms. <laughs> you should get some rest, Sayaka. You still look pretty shaken. Sorry. I'm sorry for making you worry about me. You're right. I'm going to lay down for a bit. With a nod and a small bow, she disappeared into her room. Now on my own, I headed off to tell everyone that Sayaka was okay. Once that was done, I decided to go back to my room. It was hard to think after watching that deranged video. I needed some rest of my own. Jeez. Seriously, what's going on here? There's just so many problems, I can't even decide what the biggest problem is. That we're trapped in here? That what I saw in that video might be real? Monokuma? What the mastermind has in store for us? Or are we our biggest problem? I want to get out of here, but I could never kill someone. Do the others all feel the same? Yeah, that's definitely the biggest problem right now. Huh? When I opened my eyes, they darted immediately to the clock. It's almost 10 o'clock. I fell asleep without even realizing it. Nighttime's about to start. So how come someone's here? Is it Sayaka? Sorry. I'm really sorry to come by so late. Sayaka? Sayaka? What are you doing out so late? That's when I noticed. Her body was trembling. I is everything it was okay? so strange! Sorry to bother you, but something really weird just happened. <laughs> something weird? Makoto. Just a little while ago, I was laying down in my room, and all of a sudden, my door started rattling and shaking. Her voice sounded like all the air had been squeezed out of her lungs. Just hearing her talk made me tense up. I was up. so scared! It was like someone was trying to force the door open. My door was locked, so they couldn't get in, of course, but they started shaking the door harder and harder. I was so scared I couldn't even move. So what happened? After a while, it just stopped. I let some time go by, then I got up and opened the door to check outside. Makoto. But there was nobody there. Someone tried to force their way into your room? But who would do something I like that? Mean... It's not like I'm suspicious of anyone here, but still, it makes me nervous. What if something like that happened in the middle of the night? What would I do then? Y you don't have to worry about that, right? I mean, we can't go outside during nighttime. But... but that's just a promise we made, right? If someone decided to break that promise, then... Why don't you stay in my room tonight? Would that make you feel a little better? What? All it said in the school regulations was that we had to sleep in the dorm rooms, right? It didn't state specifically which room each person had to sleep in, so... Hey, um... But two people sharing one room is, you know... Ah. Oh, jeez, I'm sorry, I didn't even think about that. Honestly, that didn't even cross but, my um... mind. No, I know, me either. It's not even that I mind the idea, but... Um... If you don't mind, could we maybe switch rooms just for tonight? Switch rooms? If it'll help put your mind at ease, then it's totally fine with me. But I don't mind you staying in my room, but are you sure you're okay with me staying in yours? That doesn't, like, concern you? <laughs> it's fine. I trust you. In that case, then... Hmm. <clears throat> this is a sad sight. Yeah, yeah, Soon yeah, the doors yeah. to. Okay then. 
Sweet. Yeah, yeah, shut up, Monokuma. <sighs> oh man, it's already nighttime. Okay, so it's settled. I'll head to your room right now. Oh, if we're gonna trade rooms, we'd better trade keys, too. <laughs> ah, that's right. We'll have to trade keys. Again? Like I said, I'm like I psychic. Said. <laughs> huh? Hey, aren't you gonna say you were just kidding? <laughs> what if I wasn't just kidding? Something resembling a smile had made its way onto her face. Thank goodness. It looks like she's already started to get back to normal. Okay, we'd better trade okay. keys then. Yep, let's do it. We exchanged keys, and when I looked back up at her again... There was another word expression um, there. Makoto, please be careful. If someone comes to the door, don't open it no matter what. I won't. The same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. <laughs> Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? Oh, by the way, just so you know, my bathroom door tends to get stuck. There's a little trick to opening it. You have to turn the knob, then lift up on the door while you pull it out. Just do that and the door should open no problem. Um. Okay, but the showers don't work during nighttime anyway, right? Oh, that's right. I totally forgot. <laughs> but I guess I might use it when I get up in the morning, so thank you. Okay, well, I'd better get going. See you tomorrow, Sayaka. Hey, um... Oh, and about what I said before... Hmm? <laughs> when I said I was psychic, it really was just a joke. Honestly, I'm just very perceptive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good night, then. See you in the morning. Sayaka gave me one last parting smile, and I headed off to my room. I looked around as soon as I got out into the hall. Everyone else's doors were closed. There was no sign of life. Good, there's nobody here. Making sure no one was around to spot me, I rushed into Sayaka's room. So this is Sayaka's room. It really doesn't look any different from mine. It smells nice, though. Alright. It's kind of weird to dig through other people's trash, but I couldn't help taking a quick peek. That's... There wasn't any doubt about it. It was the DVD with her name on it that we'd found in the AV room. That reminds me, I never did get a chance to find out what was in her video. But it's probably best if I wait till she brings it up again. If I remember right, all the girls' private bathrooms have locks on them. I'm a little reluctant to go in. <laughs> Lol. Alright, well, let's sleep. The bed itself looks exactly the same, but knowing Sayaka slept on it makes me look forward to trying it out for myself. <laughs> Makoto, come on, bro. My room came with a toolkit, but Sayaka has a sewing kit, just like the note said. And next to it is the map of the body's vital organs. I don't think Sayaka would like me snooping around too much. I should probably go to bed soon. As I lowered myself onto Sayaka's bed, a pleasant fragrance enveloped me. Sayaka's scent. Maybe it'll bring me some sweet dreams. That sound that's that's a little creepy, Makoto. So that's a little that's a little creepy, bro. Don't don't be don't be creepy. Don't be a creepo. That's this no, bad, bad Makoto, bad. <laughs> Feeling a little better than before, I fell asleep. Imagine you're all in a big spaceship in the middle of an intergalactic adventure. You've heard of Noah's Ark, right? We're sort of like that. We set sail and left Earth behind. Here you don't have to worry about crazy neighbors, corrupt cops, drunk drivers, or pyromaniacs. You don't have to worry about the ozone layer or asthma-inducing air pollution. And of course, you don't have to stress about studying your fur finals or practicing for the big game. But, but even our divine world of freedom has a few worlds. After all, freedom can only exist because of rules. If you're really dead set on returning to that tiny piece of dog poop you call Earth, please do your best to follow the rules. I hope I've made myself perfectly so clear. So then, let's everyone do our best to follow new guidelines and live happily ever after together <laughs> good morning everyone it is now 7 a.m. and nighttime is officially over time get ready to greet another bee Beautiful day! <laughs> yep, it's still working even on low power mode, okay. I remembered I was in Sayaka's room. I just remembered I promised to eat breakfast with everyone else. I'd better get going. I left Sayaka's room and made my way toward the dining hall. A 
few people had already gathered at the dining hall by the time I got there. <laughs> Hello, Makoto, and good morning. Can you believe it? I was the very first one here this morning. <laughs> good morning. Hey, Makoto. Morning. <laughs> I suppose I'm early. All right. I figured everyone who had arrived on time could be considered modeled high schoolers. And the ones who showed up a little late... Yo. Yo. Sorry. Sorry I'm late. My makeup just would not cooperate this morning. Ah, well, hello. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. My morning uh, duty took a little longer than usual. Bruh. We're the types with a more relaxed sense of time. Most high schoolers fall into this category. And finally, the ones who kept everyone waiting forever. Indeed. I suppose I'm late. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My bad, my bad. My bad, guys. Slept right through my alarm. What's your problem? What? Is this so awful to be late? <laughs> Yo! I didn't oversleep, just so you know. Nope, got lost. I blame the Bermuda Triangle. Don't care about time or other people in general. They're the kind to move at their own pace. <laughs> but regardless, everyone had arrived. At least that's how it was supposed to go. Hmm. Wait, aren't we still missing some people? <sighs> yeah, Sayaka and Byakuya aren't here yet. I don't know about you out Byakuya, but I would definitely put Sayaka in the model high schooler category. So for her to be so late... What? What's going on? Did something happen? Yo. Hey man, have you seen Sayaka? <laughs> Why would I have? I just came straight from my own room to here. Um... Did she forget about our breakfast promise? However... I got the sense she always has her stuff together. Listening to everyone talk like that, a small dark speck of unease rose up inside of me. And that speck started to grow quickly. I need to go. I have to check on her. The words had barely left my lips before I flew out into the hall. Oh no. <laughs> when I headed first was my room where I'd let Sayaka stay for a single night. Okay, so I'm starting to kind of remember certain little things from the anime that I'm like, hmm, wait a minute. I think I know what's going on here. <laughs> or she was supposed to be safe, but over the course of that one night, the room had been completely transformed. What the hell? Oh boy. This is the replica sword I brought back for self-defense. It's been taken out of its sheath. More importantly, where's Sayaka? There's a keychain on the ground. It has my name on it, so this must be my room key. I gave it to Sayaka when we traded rooms. There are slashes and gouges on the walls and the floor. More importantly, where's Sayaka? This is the replica sword I brought. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um. Damn, bro. I'd better check the bathroom. Let's take a look inside. It took me a second to realize that I was screaming. What I saw dug its way through my eyes and buried itself in my brain. And then... And then... Everything went black. When I opened my eyes, I found myself staring at a huge ceiling. It was a ceiling I remembered seeing before. And when I sat up, I saw someone looking at me. Again, it was someone I'd seen before. Ah! You're awake, finally. Are you okay? Yeah. Now's not oh, time for sleeping. Get your ass up, huh? Uh, um... You were unconscious, dude. I had to carry you back here. Well, It's no surprise, considering what happened. What happened? Um... Hey, are you okay? So it wasn't a dream? What I saw? It was real? Hmm. That's right, it really did happen. Sayaka is dead. A deep, dark despair worked its way through my body, and then exploded out of me. I shot up and took off running. Hmm. Hey, where do you think you're going? I have to see for myself. I have to see if Sayaka is... If Just Sayaka give is... up. You can check once, twice, a thousand times. Sayaka is completely and irrevocably dead. No, I have to see for myself. What? Listen to us, what? man. What do you think's gonna happen if you go out there? Well, what good is it gonna do just sitting around here? I mean, why are we all hanging out in the gym at a time like this? Our friend, Sayaka, she's... she's dead. Dead. When I said that, it finally hit me. I realized she really was gone. 
Calm down. None of us want to be here right now either. Then why? Sh shouldn't it be obvious? Monokuma, he told us all to c come here. <laughs> well, hold on, don't talk like that. We all protested it. I mean, we remember the terrible price Sayaka had to pay. But so I'm the one who convinced them to come. Right now, we need to do whatever he says. We're his prisoners, right? It's not a good idea to defy him without Correct. reason. We don't need to make any more sacrifices than we already have. Why should we listen to anything he has to say? It's obvious he's the one who killed Sayaka. Wrong! I would never do that! If you can believe anything, you can believe that! <laughs> he's here again. Hey! Unless um... someone violates a school regulation, I absolutely will not interfere. I can promise you, I won't do anything that goes against the purpose of your school life here. Listen up! I'm famous at Safari Parks throughout the world for following the bear times one rule. But... but... Then who did it? Who killed her? Come on! You already know the answer! The one who killed her is... One of you! Nobody had a reply for that. One of us killed Sayaka? Don't be stupid, Wawa? that's... Hmm, what's the matter? You guys all look like you're about to see a dove get shot up with a Gatling gun! <laughs> Don't you remember what I told you when this all began? Yahoo! One of you decided to kill Sayaka so that you could graduate! Someone's just following the rules. There's nothing wrong with that. Well... You're lying, right? Of course he's lying. I'm telling you, he killed her. Wrong. Nope, sorry. One of you is now a bona fide killer. If they wanted to, the one who did it could testify to that little fact. What? Without him thinking, I look around at everyone. They all had the same look on their faces. Everyone looked at each other with a combination of fear, suspicion, and confusion. Uh, um... uh, are you serious? What? What is this? Someone... Someone killed someone? <laughs> it is amazing what some people are capable of. Just hold on. Hey, hold on. Don't just assume he's telling the truth. Stop talking. That's enough. Before we do anything else, I'd like to confirm something with the stuffed animal here. <laughs> if one of us really did kill her, that person gets to graduate from the school, right? Huh? Huh? Come on. Don't play dumb. That's what you said, isn't it? If you kill someone, you get to leave. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why are you laughing? <laughs> it's cause... <laughs> naive. You're just so naive. You really think it's that easy? You can just kill someone and walks on out of hey, here? You're super naive. Now. Devilishly naive. <laughs> Hellishly naive. No, no, no. The real thing has just begun. The... Real thing? Now Are then. you ready? Allow me to explain the second part of the rule regarding graduation. Just like I explained before, you must kill someone if you want to leave. However, even if you do that, there's still one more part to the agreement you have yet have to unhold, remember? Then perhaps... You are referring to rule number six of the school regulations. If you are the blackened that committed the murder, you can't be found out by the other students. That is what you were talking about, is it not? In other words... Bingo! It's not enough to just kill someone. You have to actually get away with it! Which naturally means you need a system in place to assess whether or not it's been gotten away with. <laughs> so, a certain amount of time after a murder has taken place, a class trial will begin! Class trial? Hmm. Yep, it'll begin a few hours after the murder. Everyone will gather together, including the blackened who committed the murder, and they and the spotless students will all engage in one big debate showdown. During the trial, you'll have to present your arguments about who you think the blackened is. And once everything comes to an end, the outcome will be decided by popular vote. If the answer you've arrived at is correct, only the one that disturbed your peace will be punished. The rest may continue their communal life. However, if you choose poorly, then the one who got away with murder will survive, and the rest of you will receive your punishment. Which of course means your school life will come to an end. As far as class trial rules go, that's all there is to it! Well... Hmm... Oh. Well, to put it what? simply, it's execution! <laughs> yeah. e execution?! What? And by execution, you mean... Execution is... Execution! Execution! 
Electric chair. Bzzz, bzzz, poison gas. <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane. So to make sure I understand, if we get the culprit right, then only they die. But if we get it wrong, all the rest of us get executed? Well, what done. a smart little chimpanzee you are. Look at you implying you didn't do it without actually saying it. So it's basically what the outside world calls a lay judge system or an inquisition type thing. Which means you'll be deciding who you think the killer mm. is. But judge carefully because all your lives are on the line. Uh -huh. Okay, let me just add the rule I just described to your handbook. Make sure to keep it in mind. A new rule has been added to the regulations menu. Hey. Well, wait, hold on a second. You You're freaking about? insane, you know that? Huh? Hmm? What the? A class trial? What the hell is that? I don't want anything to do with it. What's this? Why not? Stop it! What do you mean, why not? Why do I have to waste my time trying to figure out who murdered what? someone? What? Are you saying you're not going to participate in the trial? Only punishment awaits such blasphemy. What the hell are you talking about? What? Punishment? Mm. I might, I don't know, throw you in a deep, dark, scary prison or something. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Say whatever you want. I'm not going to be part of this. I don't, don't be so don't. selfish. Stop it. You're the one being selfish. Kill whoever you want. It's got nothing to do with me. <sighs> The evil standing here before me. I'm trembling with fear. Shing. But I won't give in to such evil. It's my style to stick it out and resist till the very end. If you really want to get out of here, <sighs> you'll have to go through me first. As he said that, he came charging at us, although it was more of a waddle, but then... Are you enjoying yourself now? Are you? Huh? Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is not allowed! You violated a school regulation! I invoke the mighty summon spell! Help! To me, godly spear, Gunnir! Rip. <laughs> This wasn't supposed to... Why me? Suddenly, right at the end, her eyes shot wide open. And just like that, she never moved again. No way! What the... I don't... Uh. This can't be real. <laughs> yeah! No way! Well now. Now I am painfully aware of the great power and meaning of a promise. I really wanted to keep a corpse from popping up for no good reason, you know. Yeah. But I guess you all needed to be taught a lesson after all. <laughs> what an amazing promise. But now you guys understand, right? Now you see just how serious I am. <laughs> Defy me and you get shot full of holes, exploded, buried alive, disintegrated, etc. So, if you don't want that to happen to you, you'd best obey those school regulations. Junko's body had been impaled with a bunch of spears. An unbelievable amount of blood started pouring out of her body. It was the first time I'd ever seen the moment someone's life came to an end. Nobody there could deny what they'd seen. Junko, until just a second ago, had been our friend was dead. She died. She'd been murdered. In simple terms, it was the death of a human being. Hey, um... It's really not all that shocking. She just died, that's all. Just went and died. It's no more remarkable than the inevitable demise of the entire human race. It's just as natural as the eventual end of the world itself. <laughs> this isn't some superhero comic. So it's not like when you die, you didn't really die. Ah! This is reality. Why? Why did you have to kill her? Didn't you say you would put her in prison or something? Hmm. I changed my I mind. Knew it. No. You've been wanting to kill this entire time. Say what? Kill this entire time? Don't be silly. You can't kill time. Or are you being metaphorical? Are you saying I wanted to waste time this whole time? Damn it! Come on, what do you take me for? I'm Monokuma. Well now. Anyway, none of that matters right now. I have something I'd like to give you to help you in your search for the black end. Ta -da! This little file has all the information I've gathered about the death in question. I like to call it's it the Monokuma file. <laughs> hmm. I mean, 
Naturally, you guys aren't experts at this kind of thing, so you can only do so much with a corpse. So instead, I've gathered up everything I know about the circumstances and cause of death. Yeah. What's that? How do I know the cause of death, you ask? Because <laughs> the surveillance cameras picked up the whole thing. I got to see it all go down. So then... Wait, so then you know who killed Sayaka? <laughs> Of course I do! If I didn't, I couldn't possibly pass a fair and accurate judgment during the trial, now could I? Correct. That's a good point. The judge has to be able to make the proper decision. That's somehow comforting. Well? Now then, please put your full effort behind your investigation. After all, you don't have any choice but to give it your best shot! Seriously, you don't have a choice. <laughs> okay, so we'll meet up for the class trial in a little while! <laughs> God damn! And with that, Monokuma disappeared once again. He left us stunned and confused. He left us at a total loss. He left us with Junko's dead body growing colder right in front of us. And for who knows how long, nobody said a word. The fact that Sayaka and Junko were dead was a huge shock, of course. But there was more to it than that. There was also the idea that one of us had actually murdered someone. And that if we didn't find out who it was, we would all die here. We'd found ourselves in a situation where we couldn't help but look at each other with open suspicion. It was the worst situation imaginable, and yet, even in such a perversely terrible situation, she didn't show the slightest hint that it had gotten to her. Hey. Now's no time to wander, wallow in your own depression. The worst thing we can do right now is lose all faith in each other. That would lead to the same disastrous result as having total faith in everyone else. What? Huh? In other words... Cooperation is absolutely key at this point. Who you decide to trust or not trust is, of course, up to you. <laughs> Continuing to think about and talk about the disease certainly isn't going to help anything. What the heck? Saying stuff like that is just... <sighs> how many times have I told you, anyone who can't adapt will die. Death is the only thing awaiting those who are unable and unwilling to adapt. <laughs> if that happens, you only have yourself to blame. That's terrible! What an awful thing to say, especially after what's just, just happened. Second. Right now, exposing the killer is the most important thing. Because if we don't, we're all going to die here. <laughs> She's right. We need to begin our search right away. Of course. Either way, we can't run away from the situation, so we have no choice but to move forward. What the heck? We just have to do it, I guess. What other choice do we have? <laughs> no way in hell am I letting someone kill me. Alright, damn it, let's do this. We just have to do it. Everyone kept repeating that sentiment. They were using it like a mantra to give themselves strength. But they're right. We just have to do this. No matter how much we don't want to, we have no choice. If that's what it takes to survive, then that's what we have to do. On top of that, there was something I needed to find out. I had to know why Sayaka had to die. Why she had to be the one. I'm terrified to find out, but still, I have to know. Otherwise, I knew I'd never be able to accept her death. Which is why... I don't have any choice. I have to do this. Damn. I gently placed my hand on Junko's lifeless body. I touched her wrist to check for a pulse like they do in movies and stuff, but... She really is dead. There wasn't anything else to say. She was gone. <laughs> I don't know why you even bothered to check. After those injuries and losing that much blood. Frankly, I'd be shocked if she did survive something like that. Huh? huh? Hold on. Uh, well, hold on, just, just wait a second. She, she's dead? Then that means... What? That means everything that's happened so far is real. It's not a joke or whatever. It's really real. Let me Hell out no. Of here. Someone save me. Let me out of here. What's your problem? You're just now accepting that? Alright, well, um... Alright. Let's see here. Let's see. Who was it? I don't remember who it was that did it, but let's see. What about you? Are, are you serious? So we're really gonna try and find out who did it? Okay. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> if we find out who did it, and only that person dies, but if we get it wrong, then all the rest of us face what execution. That's what we're, that's that what that ridiculous school regulation said, right? So stupid. Okay. Just a second. Hold on. Before we begin the investigation, isn't there something else we need to discuss? Oh yeah, okay. Hey. Before we start searching for Sayaka's killer, we need to decide what to do about securing the crime scene. What do you mean? Hmm. 
You're thinking of putting someone on guard duty so nobody can disturb the area, aren't you? After all, if the culprit decides to destroy the evidence, we're pretty much screwed. Hey! In that case, I don't mind doing it. I don't like having to think anyway. I'll let you guys figure out who killed that chick. Mm. Okay, then we can let Mondo look after the scene. <laughs> Well, no, we can't just leave him there alone. What? What? Why the hell not? Stop talking. Isn't it obvious? If you were the culprit, what's the first thing you would do? By volunteering for guard duty, you're in a position to destroy all the evidence you want. <sighs> what? Fuck you! So then. Fine, then I'll stay there on guard duty as well. That way there's no problem. Mm -hmm. Two-player co-op base defense with the two of them. With their stats, they're totally OP. <laughs> <laughs> Since we won't be able to help investigate, we're putting our faith in the rest of you. But... I'm still pretty freaked out, but I'll try. Okay. Cool. Just a sec. What? What? What, what else is there to... Anyway... We're going to find out who the killer is, because if we don't, we're all gonna die here. What? What is this other thing we need to discuss? Anyway... Okay... Huh? Is this really happening? Don't fuck with Screw me. that piece of shit bear, okay. Come on, okay. Um... Consciousness has crashed. Restarting now. Please wait a moment. Okay. What uh, should I someone do? Someone got right in front of us. They. Okay. 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 What the heck? I hate this, but still, we don't have a choice. We have to figure out who did it, or else we're all dead. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you finally noticed. What the crap? Huh? Noticed what? <laughs> I was looking through the Monokuma file we received, and I noticed something very obvious and very unusual. Huh? What? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, take a look. Notice anything interesting about where Sayaka died? She died in Makoto's dorm. Ah. What? She's right. <laughs> then could it be? All at once, everyone's gaze turned to me. Hold on a second. You've got it all wrong. For just one night, I I traded rooms with her. I did it because she was afraid. <laughs> What you expect heck? us to believe that? Just tell us the truth! The looks in everyone's eyes had done a complete 180 from just a few minutes earlier. The feeling of suspicion and fear had returned, in other words. You think I did it? So then. Are we all done talking? We need to begin our investigation soon. At this point, we should split up. We need to get to the bottom of this and find out who killed Sayaka. We'll have to collect clues to form a foundation, then construct an argument to come to a final decision. If we get this so... wrong... Well, do I really have to say any more? Actually... I'd rather you didn't, no. Goodbye. Everyone pray for good luck. With that, Kyoko hurried out of the gym. Goodbye. I'll be going too. And just like Kyoko, he was gone before we realized Yo. it. Oh yeah, I'm on guard duty, huh? I better head to the scene of the crime. Mm. Ah, that's right. Hey, damn it! Let me just say this right now. If whatever son of a bitch did this is here right now, and they're thinking of destroying that evidence, you're fucking dead. They better not let me find them. I'll skip the trial and cave their goddamn skull in myself. I'm serious. I will fuck them up. Letting his deadly words hang in the air, he and Sakura ran off. So, um. But I mean, we're not detectives or anything, you know, and we're gonna investigate a murder. How do we even do something like anyway. that? Anyway, we don't really have to do anything in particular. We already know who killed Sayaka. What are you this implying? Is very suspicious. It was you. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. Mm. Don't come any closer. Are you gonna kill me too? So, um. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. It's not for sure that Makoto's guilty yet. Um. That's true. We may as well at least check, just to check. <laughs> Even if I wanted to, I couldn't help investigate. Huh. Well, why not? <sighs> I'm not good with blood. All it takes is one glimpse, and I black out. Oh yeah. Well, whatever. I don't think anyone was expecting much from you anyway. Alright, I guess I better get going. Wait, don't go yet! You have to hear me out! But it was pointless. Everyone had already left. And their parting looks at me had still been filled with suspicion. Does everyone really think I'm the killer? How did it turn out like this? Seriously, they've got it all wrong. Why did they have to suspect me? I have to do something, otherwise everyone will... Execution is... Execution! Execution! Electric chair! Bzz, bzz, poison gas! <laughs> Torn apart like a paper plane in a hurricane! I can't let that happen. I can't let things turn out the way Monokuma wants. All I have to do is find out who really did it. Who really killed Sayaka.
victim was Sayaka Maizono. The time of death is estimated to be around 1.30 a.m. The body was discovered in Makoto's room, in the dormitory. All evidence suggests that the death took place in the bathroom. The cause of death was a stab wound right to the abdomen. There was also an injury to her right wrist. Specifically, the wrist appears to have suffered a fracture. We have no choice but to push forward if we want to find out what happened. Somehow, I have to find out the truth so that we can all survive. And for Sayaka, I have to find out how she was killed. <sighs> Monokuma file number one has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Yep. First of all, I should head to the scene of the crime, my room. We won't make any progress without investigating there. Okay. So I headed to my room where Sayaka's corpse still remained. I'd better examine the state of my room a little closer. That might reveal something new. There are scratches and gouges on my wall and bed. Is that evidence of a struggle? It looks like there must have been some kind of fight in my room. Damn it, I was right there in the other room. If only I'd Wait. heard something. That would not have been possible, huh? huh? Don't you remember? All of our rooms are completely soundproof. So something could happen in the room right next to you and there's no way you can well. know. Perhaps this was another of Monokuma's strategies, creating an ideal setting for murder. Evidence of a struggle has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Cool. Huh? Looking at the lint roller, it looks like there's way less than there was before. Did Sayaka see how dirty my room was and decide to clean up a little? There are gouges in the bed, like someone attacked it. What the hell happened here? There are scratches and gouges on my walls and bed. Okay, yeah, saw that already. Looks like... Mm -hmm. Well. Okay. There's a key on the ground. It has my name on it, so this must be my room key. If I remember correctly... Ah, oh, that's right. We'll have to trade keys. When we switched room, we switched keys, too. So Sayaka would have had the key here in my room the entire time. But wait, if that's true, then... How did the killer get into the room in the first place? Could Sayaka have forgotten to lock the door? No, that seems impossible. The same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching? After saying that, there's no way she would have forgotten to lock it or opened it for any reason. Well, maybe she dropped the key somewhere and someone else grabbed it or something. No, that's not possible either. Sayaka was in here when we switched rooms. And with how scared she was, she wouldn't have gone walking around, so she couldn't have dropped it. So how did the killer... Switching rooms has been added to the truth bullets section. Okay. This is the replica sword I brought back for self-defense. Does this mean it was used in the attack somehow? And plus, the sword's been taken out, so it's just the sheath, but... Huh? There's some scratches on the sheath. They must have been made with something sharp. But how'd the sheath get scratched up in the first place? Even if someone used the sword during the struggle, it doesn't make sense for the sheath to be damaged. I mean, if you're gonna attack someone with a sword, the first thing you do is unsheath it. A heavy sheath like this would only get in the way. It could just slide off in the middle of the fight. So why are there scratches on the sheath? Hmm. Yeah. This is the replica sword I brought back for self-defense. Does this mean it was used in the attack somehow? And plus, it's been taken out of its sheath. It hadn't actually looked at the blade itself till now. I shouldn't be surprised it's coated in gold too. On top of that, some of the gold coating has come off on parts of the blade and the handle. Yeah, the handle especially is missing a lot of its coating. I remember the coating sticks to you even just touch it a little bit. Replica sword has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Alright, let's... I should look around in here first. I can check the other spots later. Okay, um... Toolkit is still inside the drawer. I don't see any evidence it's been used at all, which makes sense, I guess. I mean, it's mine, and I haven't had any reason to open it. I can't imagine a situation where I'd need a toolkit. This Yo. What? We ain't exactly in the mood to what? be building fucking furniture, right? So you haven't used yours either, you've been? What? No, not just what? me. Nobody's busted theirs out yet, far as I know. Actually, we were talking about it just yesterday. By the way. None of the guys have opened their toolkits yet, because, like, why the hell would we? Toolkit has been added to the truth bullet section. Okay.
Okay, can I go in here yet? No? Man, I've already, like, examined almost everything. Sakura, do you think I'm guilty hey. too? I try not to make assumptions like that. I simply don't know whether or not you did this. Hmm. Whatever decision the rest of you come up with, I will follow your lead. I see. Okay. By the way. You know, I realized something while I was on guard duty. The killer could have already destroyed some evidence, right? Before anyone found the body, I mean. There's a trash room here in the dorms, right? They could have tossed some stuff in there. Yeah, that's definitely you possible. You son of a bitch! Ugh, Anyone shit. who raises their hand to a woman is scum that deserves death. That's what my brother taught You're me. Fucking so dead. if I ever find the son of a bitch that did this, I'm gonna pound his goddamn face in. But but what if it was a girl that did it? Yo. That'll all get sorted out when the time comes. <laughs> all right. Hey, Kyoko. I quietly called her name while she was investigating the area. But what are you doing? Isn't it obvious? N no, not really. I'm searching. Searching? She was down on her knees, carefully inspecting every inch of my room. Did you lose a contact or something? I don't know what she's doing exactly, but she seems to be concentrating pretty hard on it. But a few seconds later, she suddenly stood up straight and Listen. said, Are you a clean freak? Huh? N no, I don't think so, but what? Nodding, she glanced around my room one more time. I see. Interesting. What's interesting? Hey. Just as I suspected, there's something very unusual about your room. Unusual? What do you mean? So... I've searched your floor from one corner to another, and I didn't find one single strand of hair. Indeed. Really? Not one hair from the victim, and not one hair from you, even though you've been living in here. You know, now that you mention it, I noticed something while I was looking around before. It looked like the lint roller in my room had been used, but I never touched it. Could someone have used it to... I see. Very interesting. Your room didn't have a single hair in it, and someone used your lint roller without your knowledge. In other words, someone other than you came in and scrubbed your room clean. Was it Sayaka? Or the killer? Well... That's the question, isn't it? Makoto's room cleanliness has been added to the tree. Okay. Cool. Alright, can I go in the bathroom now? The bathroom and on the other side of this door no I can't let it get to me I can't afford to freeze up now forcing myself to push my panic down I stepped into the bathroom looking at her made it painfully clear it wasn't a dream or an illusion she had lost everything that made her her Sayaka all at once I was overcome with dizziness nausea the urge to burst into tears but I can't I can't hesitate now. Why? Why did Sayaka have to die? I have to uncover the truth. I have to find out what happened. I wanted to give up. I wanted to collapse. But that thought held me up and supported me. I told myself I simply couldn't face what I saw, but, but now is not the time to think like that. I pulled out the Monokuma file to verify what it said about her body. Some sort of sharp object had been thrust into her stomach. That must have been the killing blow. But whatever they used to kill her, where'd they get it? That's definitely something I should look into later. Also, according to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's right wrist is broken. Her wrist does look swollen and bloody, that's for sure. But there's something sort of glittery there on her wrist, too. Right there, her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery. That definitely concerns me. Another thing that concerns me is... Huh? There's some blood on her left index finger, but that's it. The palms of both of her hands are totally spotless, so how come only her left finger? Sayaka's wrist has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. The stab wound in her stomach is what killed her, so when she broke her wrist, that must have happened earlier on. I mean, how would her wrist get broken after she'd already been killed? So it's very possible she broke her wrist during the struggle. The killer attacked Sayaka in the main room, and when her wrist got broken... After that, the killer cornered her in the bathroom, where they inflicted the deadly wound. Hold on. I looked past Sayaka to the wall behind her, and there I saw... What? Written in blood were the numbers... 11037. Those aren't numbers. Those aren't numbers.
did Sayaka do this? It would seem... It looks like you found it, right, Makoto? The bloody numbers. That's most likely Sayaka's dying message. They're not numbers. I've never seen something written in blood before. It really was her final message. It's as if she wrote it with life itself. Right. Do you often talk like an expiring poet? But the numbers she wrote, what do they mean? 11037... I have no idea what that could possibly mean. So... The way she wrote the numbers makes me think she wanted to use her body to block them. If she wrote them in that location while she was sitting the way we found her, it means she must have wrote them by turning only her hand toward the wall. If you were to write something in that position, do you know what the result would be? The result? Well, think about it. You're not going to tell me? Makoto. You need to uncover the mystery of this case yourself. Otherwise, the case will end and you'll remain unconvinced. I have no idea what you're trying to say, but it's obvious you're not going to tell me. Dying message has been added to the truth bullets section of your handbook. It sounds like Kyoko knows what Sayaka's dying message means, but honestly, I have no idea. Oh, I know who I should talk to. When it comes to m numbers, who better to ask than the ultimate programmer? Makoto. There's one other thing I wanted to ask you about. Do you know the door to your bathroom got broken? Broken? Oh, you mean how it gets stuck? What? Gets stuck? Yeah, I guess I'm the only one, but the door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. When I first tried to use it, I thought it was just locked. But once you learn the trick, it opens no problem. Bathroom door frame has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Correct. So the door doesn't quite fit the frame, huh? But actually, I'm referring to the broken doorknob. Huh? The doorknob? That's right. You didn't notice? We'll just try closing the bathroom door. I'm sure you'll see right away what I'm talking about. I did what Kyoko said and shut the bathroom door. Huh? The doorknob. Hmm. What the heck? The doorknob's practically about to fall off! Why is it like this? It would seem... Someone must have used a screwdriver or something similar to unscrew it. Whatever it was, it's obvious this was intentional. What? It was intentional? Why would someone want to do that? So... I guess maybe they were trying to get the door unlocked and ended up breaking the whole thing. But my bathroom door doesn't have a lock on it. Only the girls' bathrooms can lock, right? She stood there for a while, lost in thought. Then apparently struck with a sudden realization, she shot a question at me. Just a second. I have just one more question for you. You mentioned earlier that your bathroom door would get stuck, right? Did you tell anyone about that? Oh, um, well I did tell Sayaka about it last night when we switched rooms. So what you're saying is, only you and Sayaka knew mm -hmm. about it. Hmm, interesting. She had the slightest hint of a smirk on her face. I got the sense that she was really starting to get into all I this. I see. Then that clears it up. Huh? What clears what up? I'm so lost. Goodbye. Well, see you later. As if forgetting I was ever even there, she suddenly turned and left the room. Bathroom doorknob has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. I still don't really understand any of this, but I've already given my room a good once-over. Maybe I should look around somewhere else. I should start looking into where the murder weapon might have come from, and also, I should look into the DVD Sayaka got. With Sayaka dead, I have no choice but to see for myself what was in that video. And on top of that, I'm sure there are some other areas worth checking out, too. Maybe I should see what everyone else thinks, if they'll even talk to me, that is. Okay. Alright, well. Leave the area. Yep. Alright, well, um... You, sir. Seems like something doesn't seem right. The Monokuma file said Sayaka was killed in your room. I just can't stop thinking about it. Could it be the nameplate? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? What about the nameplate? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh? This is definitely my room, but the nameplate has Sayaka's name on it. Huh? 
This is Sayaka's room, right? But the nameplate has my name on it. The nameplates on my room and Sayaka's room were switched? So all that effort I put into switching rooms without anyone knowing was totally pointless. But why would anyone do that? Dorm nameplates has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Wasn't there something about the dining hall at some point, I think, that was mentioned? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, this area is. Nope. Okay. Let's go down here. <sighs> All right. Wait a minute. But it said check out the... Bruh, did I not grab it when I checked on it the other night? God damn it. Okay, well, fuck. Where am I supposed to go here? Chihiro, I was hoping I could ask you something. Huh? Oh, what is it? Before she died, Sayaka left a message. She wrote out the numbers 11037. Do you have any idea what those numbers might mean? Like, could they be a code for something? Mm. Um, sorry, no. Chihiro slowly shook her head. Uh, I'm, uh, sorry. I'm sorry. I just don't know. Okay, well, don't worry about it. Thanks anyway for trying. Even she doesn't know. Or could she maybe know more than she's letting on? No, couldn't be. <sighs> ah, no way, I seriously don't want to die here. Help me. I'm begging you. God, Buddha, Mother Earth, God of Space, King Neptune, help me. I don't care who it is, just get me out of here. Hero doesn't seem prepared to do any kind of investigating right now. Okay, well, um... Oh, wait a minute, hold on. They s someone said something about a trash thingy, Mavob, right? Hold on. Hold up. There's like a thing for trash, I think someone said. Let's see. Okay, let's see here. Where's the trash? There it is, okay. Let's see here. There's a hatch on the floor. Door won't budge, it must be locked. Okay. There's a sturdy gate here, no one can pass. Kuma, appear! It's the end of the line, the trash room. This is where all the trash in the school eventually winds up. How do you get no, this gate no, open? No, no, you can't go any further! No, 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 no entry beyond this point. Only the person on cleaning duty is allowed in. Cleaning duty? No, no, you can't go any further! 
Who's on cleaning duty? No, no, you can't go any further. This is stupid. It'd be faster to just go around and ask no, the others. No, no, you can't go any further. Hmm. Cleaning duty has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Looks like some kind of switch. I wonder what it does. Okay. Wait, no, I wasn't done. Hold on. My oh, Kuma, no, that's not what I here. wanted. No, no. No, no. That's not what no, I wanted. No. No, 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 you no. can't do any- Okay, well, alright, I guess I uh, can't check anymore in there, so, um, okay. I have to find out who the fuck is on cleaning duty so I can, you know, finish investigating this shit. Let's see, are you on cleaning duty? <laughs> Such ignorance. <laughs> Talk is the one who has any interest in organizing things like that. Oh, good point. Okay. Where is he anyway? Seems like thing doesn't seem right. Monokuma file. Okay. Yeah, he's just gonna talk about the nameplate. Um, I'm looking for whoever's on hmm. cleaning duty. Cleaning duty. As a matter of fact, that's it's that's me. Why do you ask? It just so happens Monokuma talked to me yesterday and asked me to take care of it. Without someone on cleaning duty, the school would be filled with trash in no time. <laughs> So I formally applied for the position. Mm. I was going to start this morning, but after what happened, I haven't had a chance to get started. And since you're on cleaning duty, you can open the gate in front of the trash room? Here we go! Of course! It's my job to gather up all the garbage and toss it in the trash room. And to do that, they gave me the key for the trash room gate. Mm -hmm. Though we're supposed to rotate once a week, so eventually you'll be in charge. Very strange. Wait, hold on. You need a key to get into the trash room, and only the person on cleaning duty has access to the key. What's the point of going to all that trouble? Why not just leave the trash room open all the time so we can throw things out whenever we want? That does seem more so convenient. So, in other words... Actually... Anyone who... Cause, okay, yeah. So that's it. That must be why. If anyone could go in and out of the trash room whenever they wanted, then destroying evidence would be easy. The thrill would disappear and things would become boring. But boring? Hey, listen! Anyway, more important than that... Hey, you bastard! Hey, fatty! Why'd you want the cleaning duty gig anyway? Oh. Uh, um... I just decided to volunteer for something I knew no one else would want to do. What's the big deal? You... Liar! I know why Is you did it. it. You like... want to dig through all the girls' trash, looking for, you know, and poking around at it. There's no way What are you talking about? about? All my love is for 2D. You know what I mean. But there's all kinds of trash diggers like that. Maybe I'll get tired of 2D and then turn to... I would never get tired of 2D! <laughs> After spending a significant amount of time comparing 2D and 3D, I voluntarily chose 2D. The only thing 3D is good for is to shower love and affection on 2D. Oh, and PVC figures. Give me a break. How are you not totally embarrassed to say stuff like that? <laughs> If you're so worried about Hufumi's questionable morality, there's a very easily easy solution. Whenever a guy has cleaning duty, Sakura can accompany them from picking up the trash can to disposing it of it. <laughs> what? What? If you're as innocent as you claim, where's the harm in it? <laughs> what? That's not how it's supposed to... Anyway, on another topic, Hifumi, since you were on cleaning duty, I have a favor to ask you. Mm-hmm. What, so now you suddenly want to join my party? Sorry, but you haven't triggered that flag yet. I mean, you haven't helped me recover from a past trauma, or save a village, or beat a boss. No, nothing like that. I was just hoping to get into the trash room and look around. You oh, got it. okay. So easy. So Hufumi and I headed down to the trash room. Okay. Hmm. You'd like me to open the gate, hmm. wouldn't you? <laughs> You know, when I look at it, it makes me think. They said he killed his wife. He learned how to get by on the inside, but he never stopped dreaming. Get busy living or busy dying, he said. So him and Rita, they found themselves a way out. Whatever, please just hurry up. Da, 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 da. Okay, okay, leave it to me. Hifumi <coughs> 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 pulled the key out of his pocket and used it to flip the switch next to the gate. And then... Mr. Naegi! However, Mr. Naegi, surely you aren't planning to use the trash room to destroy evidence, are you? 
Y you fiend! You planned this all along! No, I just wanted to see if the actual killer had tried to destroy any evidence or not. Mm. But the mm. actual killer mm. is you, isn't it? Mm. You want to see if you left anything behind. <gasps> Wait, maybe a parallel world? Whatever, let's just hurry up and keep looking. This is the incinerator. It's way in the back part of the trash room. It's a good 30 feet from here to the gate. Ah, and it's on right now. Mm -hmm. Do you see the green and yellow buttons next to the mouth of the incinerator? Yes, indeed. It's a pretty simple setup. You press the green button to get it going, and the yellow button to turn it off. Sooner or later, you'll be on cleaning duty, so make sure you learn this before you leave, okay? Huh? Someone turned the incinerator on! Very strange. I'm quite certain it was off last time I was down here. Was it a Perhaps fairy? it was the work of a fairy. Hifumi, do you realize what you just said? Huh? What? The fairy? No, you said that last time you were here, the incinerator was off. <laughs> ah, yes. About that. There can be no mistake. If I've got one thing going for me, it's my memory. I feel as Yesterday, if... as soon as I was appointed, I came down to check the place out. It definitely wasn't on yet. Uh, I haven't been back to the trash room since then. And since I'm the only one who has a key to open the gate, Most it suspicious. should be impossible for the incinerator to be on. And yet... So that means someone was able to switch on the incinerator without opening the gate. But how is that possible? The incinerator has been added to the Okay. Hmm, maybe if you're really good at throwing things, you know? There's something on the ground in front of the incinerator. It looks like a burnt piece of something. Mm. A burnt piece? Like a hunk? Like a hunk of burning... <laughs> Bruh. Anyway, this is... It looks like a piece of cloth, and the shape... It's a part of the sleeve from a button-up shirt. And now that I look at it, that's definitely blood on the cuff, which means... This is all that's left of some of the evidence the killer destroyed. But there are lots of people here with white button-up shirts. This isn't enough by itself to figure out who the killer is. Burnt shirt piece has been added to the truth bullet section. Okay. What's this? There are shards of broken glass shattered around in front of the incinerator. It looks like it used to be some kind of glass ball, just about big enough to fit in the palm of your hand. Is this perhaps... Yeah, is that? You know what this is? Mm -hmm. They say if you collect all seven, a dragon will appear and grant you a single wish. <laughs> this isn't Dragon Ball Z, dude! <laughs> hmm. Erm, um, kidding aside, it's the kind of thing you might set on see on any big city street corner. Okay, gaze into it and it will show you a glimpse of the future. Just like that Mina girl who was on that quest to find that one guy. Okay, he is a total, like, weeb. <laughs> yeah, I get what you're trying to say, but who did this particular ball belong to? There's only one person it could be. They should all still be in the gym. I'd better go find out for sure. Shattered crystal ball has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Hmm. This whole thing is quite confusing. Uh, when I was here last, the incinerator was off, and those glass shards and burnt clothes weren't. Completely what does it all mean, Mr. Nagy? Will you be confessing soon? Why me? That's it. Everyone I'm already sure knows you it. did it. All the mysteries are being solved one by one. Sounds like he's living out one of his comic book fantasies. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we found our evidence, I guess. Um, okay. Alright. Alright, you know what? Gym. Hey, hero, can I ask you something? Uh, uh, no, 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 I gotta get out of here, gotta get out now, I've had enough, gotta break free. Hero, snap out of it! Uh, um... Huh? Makoto, what are you doing here, what? Hey, um, does this look familiar? Ah! 
That's my crystal ball! But it's all smashed! What the hell? What the heck? I, I only bought it because the guy said it was blessed. He said it was unbreakable. So how did it break? What? Was it actually just made of glass and not crystal? Did that guy totally dupe me? <sighs> he said it belonged to the pillars of history. Genghis Khan, George Washington, Napoleon. He said whoever controlled that crystal ball controlled the world. Was that seriously all BS? Um, let's put that aside for now. So you can say without a doubt that this belonged uh, to you. Um... Yeah, that's mine for sure. I probably forgot it in the laundry room last night. Someone must have come by and snatched it. You left it in the laundry room. That means anyone could have found it and taken it. Shattered crystal ball has been updated in the triple... Okay. Thanks, Hero. That's all I wanted uh, to know. Um... Sure. Um, by the way, I'm almost afraid to ask, but how much did you pay for that <sighs> thing? Everything I saved up from fortune telling for two full years came out to be like a million. A million? Uh, um... That's pretty cheap, actually. I mean, considering it gives you the power to control the world. That's just too... too stupid. I can't even feel bad for him. <laughs> yeah, he's a little dumb at me. <laughs> Leave the gym. Okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sus, man. Uh, for one, those numbers, they're not numbers. They spell something. Like, it's literally just upside down. Like, if you look at it. It's upside down. Fucking letters. Listen to me! So, you have a second, Makoto. I've uncovered something most unusual. The door to everyone's dorm has a nameplate on it to show whose room it is, right? You hear me? Well, it just so happens... <laughs> Wait, no, no. You might be the killer yourself. I can't tell you anything. Got it. Forget everything I just said. Forget, 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 Beam! <laughs> Sorry, just a little joke. Even I do jokes sometimes. Haha. -ha. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> That's a little dumb, but alright. God damn. Like, where the fuck else am I supposed to go and do here? Because, like, I, I think I've investigated, like, everything there is to investigate at this point. <laughs> Um... Okay. Hello there. You, sir! Seems Something like... Okay, you're just saying the same shit. Very strange. So, why was Sayaka in your room when she was killed? Could it be because you were the culprit? No, you've got it all wrong. Sayaka and I switched rooms last night. He didn't even want to- he didn't even try to hide the suspicion on his face. <laughs> even if what you say is the absolute truth, you're still responsible for her death, wouldn't you say? Huh? <laughs> After all, she wouldn't have died if she hadn't switched rooms with you, right? The reason Sayaka was killed is because I suggested we switch rooms? She's dead because of me? Then it should have been me that died. <laughs> well, all we can say right now is that it's a possibility. If that's- if that's really true, then I- okay, well, um... Anyway... I go in here. <sighs> okay. There can only be one thing in the trash can. Yep, the DVD. Sing was there. Wonder what did she see? It might not be directly related to the case, but it might be worth checking out anyway. Sorry, Sayaka, I need to borrow this DVD. Okay. So I didn't grab it initially last night, but um that's back to the fucking DVD room or whatever, so I can check this shit out. Alright. Hopefully my fucking phone battery holds up <laughs> long enough to do this shit, cause it was at like 10% a few minutes ago. But I did turn it to low battery mode, so I mean it might be charging faster than it's losing battery at this point. But I have no idea. Okay. I should be able to use this to see what's on the DVD, the DVD that Sayaka threw in the garbage. I sat down in front of the screen and put the DVD in the player. I pushed play and the screen was dark for a few seconds, but then... <sighs> An image slowly appeared. It looked like some kind of concert. And standing on stage, front and center, was a face I recognized all too well. Sayaka. She was there, along with the friend she said she had been so important to her. She was positively glowing there in front of the crowd, so full of life. Seeing that image made it even harder to accept, except that she was dead. My vision started to blur and darken, and then the voice had come to despise so much began to float out of the speakers. Sayaka Maizono, the ultimate pop sensation, lead singer for a world-famous all-girl pop band. 
just for these girls, the glowing spotlight only made them that much more beautiful. But then... Suddenly, the screen went dark. And in the next moment, I saw something I could hardly believe. <gasps> what the? Sayaka had disappeared from the strage, which was now in ruins. But what I noticed even more than that was the figure of the other girls who had all simply collapsed. This ultra successful team suddenly fell apart. None of them will ever perform on stage again. None of them will ever feel the warmth of the spotlight. For Sayaka, there's simply nowhere for her to return to. So here's the billion dollar question. What a what could have caused the group to go to pieces? Damn. Without warning, the video cut off. What the hell? That wasn't real, right? They're a super famous pop group. Everyone knows who they are. Is he trying to say he was even able to get to them? That really did happen. Everyone in the outside world must be going crazy. What kind of person would take things this far? Leave the area. Yes. Okay. Um. Listen to me. You hear me? Yeah, it's the same shit. Got it. <laughs> okay. What's in here? Oh, this is just the... Okay. So, uh... Clues. Let's just agree that we do not know who the culprit is and leave it at that. Whatever secrets I may have, I don't intend on revealing anything in the last trial. Okay, then, do you have any suggestions for where I should well. start looking? Okay. <laughs> I suppose it wouldn't hurt to give you a little hint. The scene of the crime, naturally, but I think the trash room is all the Okay, I already looked into there. As for me... <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I don't care about what you have to say. Let's go. Um, the area. Okay, is, is the investigation done yet? Like, holy shit. I think I've investigated all there is to investigate at this point, man. Like, I'm conf <sighs> Okay. What else is there, man? supposed to look at <laughs> I have investigated everything at this point what am I supposed to do now go back to the trash room is there something I missed in here There's wait. Sorry. Thanks to Fumi's help, I was able to get inside. Okay. So wait, what's that? Oh, the monitor is Monica appears on right now. It's just starting to go crash. I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Oh, so is that everything? Mm -hmm. Close what you open, put away what you take out. Okay. <laughs> okay. One of those things he said was definitely not like the others. Okay. Um. What's in here? What's there? There's a hatch on the floor. The door won't budge. It must be locked. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm slightly confused now. What am I supposed to do at this point? All right. Let's see. Like, is there something I'm missing, or like what? Yeah, I've got a 
I've got them all, so like... Um... Alright, well, uh... How do I move on to the trial? Do I just... Okay, nope. That ain't gonna work. I'm confused. I supposed to do here? Um. Do I just have to talk to everyone or like what? Um, well, I already talked to her, I think. I think. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I talked to her already. <laughs> <sighs> God damn, man, like, what, what am I supposed to do at this point? Like, there's just... What's in here? Wait, laundry room. It's a washing machine, a washing machine that has nothing to do with this case. Okay, that's not what I wanted to look at, but okay. There's some magazines laying around, no help there. The vending machine's still there, still doesn't have any way. Okay. Fusion. Hi there. <sighs> T to kill someone just to save your own life. And I've been living with someone like that? I think I might be. That is what Monokuma said really true. Did one of us really kill Sayaka? <laughs> if the mastermind really was going to get involved, they would have just killed us on day one. That's a good point. By the way, how's your investigation going? <sighs> I already told you I don't do blood, so I don't plan on just doing any investigating. Besides, I already know who did it. This is very After all, suspicious. Where was Sayaka killed? In your room, right? What more proof do we need? We already know the truth. She really doesn't trust me at all. Okay, so you think I am a murderer. Alright. Okay. Anyone else? <sighs> Damn, man. I'm like at this point I've like talked to everyone I've done everything that there is to do so like uh <laughs> listen to wait I already you talked to you <laughs> no got it okay uh anyway let's go in wait no that's the main hall area I think Huh? Mm. Okay. Uh.
Okay, I'm confused. I've investigated oh. everything. How do I move on to the... How can I move on to the trial? Bruh. I have talked to literally every character at this point. confused because I have visited every room I have gotten all the little bits of evidence there is literally nothing else for me to do so um I am confusion maybe like there's something in the dining room I'm missing I guess because the knife that kinds of kitchen knives here, big and small, but it looks like one of them is missing. Is it missing from the very beginning? Or I better see if anyone here knows more about it. Okay, kitchen knife set has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Bunch of vegetables. Okay. Okay. Hey, so did you notice that one of the kitchen knives is missing from the dining yeah, hall? Yeah, totally. Yeah, weird, huh? I thought it was kind of strange, the knife suddenly disappearing like that. Oh, so it wasn't missing from the beginning. That's right. Nope, last I remember, they were all lined up in a nice, neat row. So when did you notice one of them had disappeared? Whoa. Well, I went to go get some tea from the kitchen last night and all the knives were still there. But when I finished my tea and went back into the kitchen to wash my glass, one of the knives was gone. So you're saying the knife disappeared while you were drinking your tea in the dining mm. hall? Yeah. In other words, you were right there in the dining hall when someone came and took it. Then you should be able to say for sure you can tell everyone I didn't come into the dining hall last night. Which proves I didn't take it. Owie's account has been added to the truth bullets section of your um... Hey, by the way, did you really kill Sayaka? What? Of course not! I would never! Hina, do you really think I murdered her? I mean... Well, she was killed in your room, right? So, I mean, you guys were supposed to be friends, right? But you still killed her. On the other hand, two people becoming good friends, then one killing the other is a classic drama setup. So when you consider everything together, Aww. I honestly have no idea. Oh, finally! <laughs> God damn it. Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. What say we just get started, hmm? It's time for the long-awaited class trial! Now then. Allow me to appoint a proper location for the proceedings. Please go through the red door.
floor on the first floor of the school. <laughs> okay. The red door on the first floor. That's where I should go. No, where I have to go. Okay. Cool. You're late, Makoto. We've all been waiting for you. <laughs> I bet you were afraid you would be discovered as the, the murderer you are. Listen to me! Let's not jump to conclusions just yet. Save that for the class trial. There we can reveal the details of Makoto's crime. So they really are convinced I did it, but... I didn't do it. Me and Sayaka both know that all too well. But then who is the killer? I know who it is. I, I'm, I'm sus. I'm, I'm looking at you, buddy. I'm looking at you over there. <laughs> the one who murdered Sayaka. Is it really one of us? <laughs> is everyone here? Okay, then. Please board the elevator in front of you, which will transport you to the courtroom. Where all your fates will be decided. <laughs> I'll meet you all down there. I'll be waiting. Guess I have no choice but to get on this well elevator. Done. Let us begin. Yes, indeed. Good idea. Hey. Are you scared? No, scared isn't Makoto. quite right. I said it before, but it's up to you to uncover the mystery surrounding this case yourself. If you don't, you'll never come to grips with the truth. I need to uncover the truth of Sayaka's death. I didn't need someone else to tell me to do that. In Sayaka's honor. I swear I'll find out who the real killer is. As I raised my voice to try and give myself courage, I turned, trembling with anticipation during the <laughs> towards the elevator. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. Everyone else was already on the elevator. When I finally stepped on, the doors closed and the elevator started to move. Damn. The steel box descended with heavy clunking sounds towards the school's basement. I wonder if this is somehow a death row inmate feels when his fine timely comes. But I can't. I cannot English. I cannot read. <laughs> Rather than that, is it not more like a defendant? <laughs> Damn it! Rather than that, is it not more like a defendant waiting to receive his judgment? <laughs> God damn it! Why am I? <laughs> Okay. Uh, oblivious to our shared anxiety, the elevator lowered us further and further into the bowels of the school. Okay. <laughs> you finally arrived! What do you think? Doesn't it feel just like a real courtroom? It's like a Hollywood movie set, right? <laughs> Not even close. It's total shit. Well now. Okay, okay. Everyone find your assigned seats and sit down. Yahoo! Hurry up now. Hurry up. <laughs> okay. We did what he said and found our seats. The seats were arranged in a giant circle. It was set up so that everyone could see everyone else, which also meant it'd be easy for anyone to transfer their attention and unease onto anyone else. The air seemed to grow heavy as we sat there. And so the curtain on our first case opened. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly faith. A deadly class trial. Okay. Yes, I want to save. Thank you. I'm going to save that. I would like to save. Yes. Okay. Uh, alright. What's this class trial? Mention can my photo sweep okay set skills uh let's see Lydia's voice increases damage to the opponent when a statement is destroyed effective during the bullet time battle cost three okay increases bullet capacity okay cool it's literally the only skills I have right now so Okay, cool. 
All right. Um, yay. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. And the killer really is one of us, right? Of course! Okay then. Everyone, close your eyes. And whoever did it, raise your hand. Don't be a goddamn idiot. Why the hell would they raise their hand? Before we move on and start the trial, can I ask a question real quick? What's going on with those pictures? I'd feel awful if they got left out just because they died. Friendship penetrates even death's barrier. Friendship penetrates? My god, that guy is so creepy. <laughs> okay, but what about that other empty seat? There were only 15 of us to begin with, so why are there 16 seats? Oh, no reason. It's just that our little courtroom here can technically fit up to 16 people. Okay. That about does it for the preamble. Get ready to get started. First up is the case summary. Now, let the class trial begin. It's about to begin. The debate decide who we think the killer is. Anything I found, anything I noticed, I have to be ready to speak up about everything. Because this isn't just about me. Everyone's lives are on the line. Your first non-stop debate is about to begin. Would you like to hear more? Sure, why not? As things progress during each class trial, you engage in a number of non-stop debates. During these discussions, characters will speak one after another without pause. It's up to you to unearth any lies or contradictions buried within their statements. What this means is that you'll have to use your truth bullets to refute what they say. Any relevant truth bullets you found during your investigation will be loaded into the truth cylinder. Use the mouse to aim, then fire with the left mouse button. Pay close attention to each character's statements and use your truth bullets to bat blast the right ones. Note that if you run out of time, you will automatically fail, so please be careful. If you press the escape key during these augments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. Okay. I assert that the one who was murdered was Miss Sayaka Maizono! Yeah, we know that part already. And the murder took place in Makoto's room. In the bathroom. So it seems most likely that... The killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. She didn't even have a chance to resist. No, that's wrong! Just a second, Chihiro. Try to remember how my room looked. With the way things had been damaged, I think we can definitely assume there was a struggle. A struggle? Between who and who? Between Sayaka and the killer, of course. So you're saying Sayaka wasn't caught by surprise in the bathroom? She must have been attacked in the main room first, then... She ran to the bathroom to try and hide. The killer followed her in, and that's where they finished the job. That much should have been obvious after taking one look at the scene. It shouldn't even need explaining. S sorry Okay, so what's next? Next is the subject of the murder weapon. Wow, this is starting to sound like a real trial. So what was used to kill her? There was some kind of sharp object thrust into her stomach. Without a doubt, that is the murder weapon! So the killer used some random knife they had on him. No, that's wrong! No. I do think it was a knife, but not just any knife. 
I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Huh? A kitchen knife? After the murder, we discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. Which means that knife must be the murder weapon. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sort of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. And if you look real close, I could totally see that being a kitchen knife. Okay, so the murder weapon was a kitchen knife, but where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? That's right. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. What more proof do you need? Hold on a second. I'm... Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. Otherwise, what's the point of the trial? Well, we can talk all we want. It's not going to change that conclusion. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will reveal itself. You really believe that? She's right. There's got to be a breakthrough somewhere just waiting for us to find it. Because I know damn well I'm not the killer. There's a bit more to learn about nonstop debates. Would you like to hear more? Sure. You can concentrate by holding down the space key. When you're concentrating, time will slow down so you can pay closer attention to what everyone's saying. On top of that, it'll steady your aim, making it easier to target potential weak spots. Concentrating like this will consume the focus gauge, and if this gauge empties, you can't concentrate. But the focus gauge will recover over time, so let your brain take a rest, no need to rush. Well then, good luck and have fun, okay. So I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. But where oh, does that my, get us? I think my phone might have just died. <laughs> the must have taken it from the uh, kitchen, right? He did it in secret when nobody was in the dining hall. No, that's wrong. Okay, wait. Hold on. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. Next, you're gonna say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead, and say it all y you want! Well, what if I have a witness? What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember what you were telling me earlier? in and it somehow still died so charging no um, I can't really tell if it's charging or not but um Just unplugged the wrong thing. Nothing? Hold on. Um, hmm. Well, you know what? For now, I'll unplug that. No, that does not seem to be doing anything. Hmm. Oh well, hopefully it starts charging at some point. But, uh, I guess I will have no, um, camera 
my face is not going to work. <laughs> I mean, it, it still does the voice thing when I talk, but um, <laughs> my head won't move or anything anymore. <laughs> I suppose if I got set the webcam back up, maybe that'll, cause that's still plugged in and whatnot, I think. Could, uh, let's see here. My webcam as a backup. Um. not okay let's settings general settings uh, let's see here okay backup webcam initiated Okay, let me... Uh, my eyes are a little insane. Um, Okay, there we go. I had to fix my eyes. They were being weird. Um, anyway. What is that blue thing? Why, why is that there? I don't know what that is. Why is there a blue line suddenly? Okay, whatever. Okay, uh, well, anyway, backup head, head cam, uh, initiated, uh, anyway, let's get back to the game. <laughs> so you're saying the knife disappeared while you were drinking your tea in the dining hall, yeah, okay. Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Y yeah that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Um... No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. The knife disappeared while Hina was in the dining hall. But I wasn't there the entire time. In other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. Okay, then what about this? What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together? And lying to protect each other? Idiot swimmer girl? Oh, and more importantly... Why would I get involved in something like that? Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? But what if they did work together, and they just didn't know about the rule? Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case! Oops, did I say that out loud? Anyway, I didn't go to the dining hall, and I didn't take the knife, so I'm not the killer! Okay, so then... Well, who did take the knife? Hina seems the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. No, no way! I swear it wasn't me! Sure, but can you or anyone else prove that? I can. 
That's right. Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea. Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's... Me. Right. But then, couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? Actually, no. Because, um... Well... Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. Which means, we have airtight alibis. You stayed over? Doesn't that violate one of the school regulations? We're not allowed to sleep anywhere but the dorms. But it doesn't say we have to stay in our assigned room. So, I don't think that's a problem. It is a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's... it's... unwholesome! But... I'm a girl. What? You are? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Actually, there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, her clothes... Uh, it just those like schoolgirl clothes on like someone so buff is like kind of kind of amusing looking to be honest. It's like seeing someone that buff in it like that muscly in a skirt. <laughs> I just lol. Actually, there is one other person. Oh, okay. yeah, that's true. One other person did come to the dining hall while we were there. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Well, because they're not here anymore. Someone who's not here? Are you talking about... Sayaka. She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. Sayaka? Okay, so the person who took the knife from the kitchen was... Sayaka. I got it! Then... Sayaka is the one who took the knife? That's the only possibility. And thinking back on it, she was acting kind of unusual. When she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water. But most likely... Then the person who took the knife was the victim herself! I'm sure... I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. So you're saying the knife she took was then taken from her and she was killed with it? In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. What? See? He did do it after all! No! You're wrong! So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? Mm hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. Hold on. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer, wouldn't you say? Because you see, if the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. And until we unravel that little mystery, you simply can't declare that he's the killer. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Your first hangman's gambit is about to begin. Would you, would you like to hear more? Uh, okay. As things advance further in a class trial, the hangman's gambit will eventually take place. The point of this trial is to reveal an important phrase related to the incident in question. You'll have to deduce the phrase from the letters flying around or the letters already known. Complete the phrase by shooting down the flying letters in the right order. Use the mouse to aim, then press the left mouse button to shoot the desired letter. Okay. If you shoot down the wrong letters, you'll suffer damage to your influence gauge. If this gauge reaches zero or if you run out of time, you fail. Well then, good luck and have fun. Something that should have been at the scene, but wasn't. That must be the crucial point. If we can just figure out what that something is... Hair. 
Now I understand. That's right. There wasn't a single hair on the floor. So, the culprit removed some evidence? Yes. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself, not just her hair. <laughs> yes, very true, very true. Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course, to remove any trace that they had ever been there. Wait, then that means... Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. Then... Makoto isn't the culprit? Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. I would like to hear these reasons. Do you remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah, then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? What do you mean? It's fairly certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? The killer struggled getting into the bathroom, and the evidence that proves it is... The object the killer broke. I got it! Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. You're talking about the doorknob, right? Huh? The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely broken. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? Oh, yeah, true. But what does it mean? In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. This is another most bewildering act for the room's owner. It proves Makoto is beyond suspicion. So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Okay then, let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. Kyoko said it was a bewildering act. I almost didn't notice it at first, but is that the key point here? There's a bit more to learn about not some baits. Okay, sure, why not? From here on out, the number of weak spots will start going up. But no matter how many weak spots, there's essentially only one liar contradiction in that debate. What I'm trying to say is, not all weak spots you see are necessarily false. Use a truth bullet on the wrong one, and not only will you fail to repeat what they said, but you'll also lower your trust with everyone, and your influence gauge will take damage. Now, this is important, because if your influence gauge reaches zero, you fail. You'll have to rely on your own logic to determine which weak spots are actually lies or contradictions. Well then, good luck and have fun. Okay. The incident took place in Makoto's room. Sayaka was first attacked in the main room. She then fled into the bathroom. Then the killer ran after her. And they got into the bathroom. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door. Because Sayaka had locked it. No, that's wrong! The reason my bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. After all, the girls' rooms are the only ones with locking bathrooms, right? Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. 
Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yep. True as true can be. But you know, you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? But to have such a cruddy door... <laughs> that's not lucky at all! So the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck. But the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked. So they tore apart the doorknob to get in. Okay, but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place? Everyone should have known you can't lock any of the boys' bathrooms. The killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. The killer was convinced the bathroom door was locked, so they didn't know that the door didn't act. actually couldn't be locked. In other words, the important detail about the scene of the crime that they didn't know was that... I got it! The killer must not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! And yet, he's absolutely right. Say what? Well, to be more specific, what the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms, which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room... Then there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through! So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But... The killer must have been considerably confused with no idea how they actually got the door opened. Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? That is a definite possibility. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? Then Makoto couldn't have done it. Okay, then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up! Quit without saving! But what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? Well then. Why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules! Majority rules? Do you really think that's a good idea? Yeah, our necks are on the line here. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh! As a matter of fact, I do have one question. Oh, you... You don't gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Um... Well... I was just wondering... How did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? Hmm, yes. How did the killer get inside? Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. Then... maybe someone pick- Negative! If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. They could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just... let him in. No. That can't be it either. Oh! -ho! Trying to argue against me? Sounds like someone doesn't know his place. Hello? Why exactly can't that be it? Because she asked me to do something in particular because of how frightened she was. That's the answer right there. There's no way I could let someone in because...
I got it! Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't believe she would have opened the door for anyone. What if her being scared was a lie? Huh? W what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and... There's something I want to talk to you about. Just, two, just us two in five minutes. Come see me in my room. Okay. Dang. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room, okay? I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appeared. Oh, man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique, but even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Huh? Which means, only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? No, I didn't. But of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. Sayaka wrote but, it? But why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Huh? What makes you say that? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Very well then, pay attention! Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. No, that's wrong! The nameplates on Mai and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got... switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other. So switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? Right? Okay, then who did it? There's only one person who switched the nameplates. I got it! Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. 
something I want to talk to you about. Just us two in five minutes. Come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong one. She okay. specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. But why would she switch them in the first place? She wanted someone to come to the room she was in and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. We figured it out! We know who did it! Whoever she invited over is the culprit! But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? Oh yeah, what's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? The reason I know Saika's wrist was broken with the pig sword is because when you look at her wrist, there's no doubt. I got it! All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen, there's something glittery there. See? Is... is that gold? It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got it! Because she got hit with the sword, right there on her wrist! I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. All right, then it's about time to solve this mystery. What happened in my room, and what led to Sayaka's death, that's what we need to make clear. There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. Would you like to hear more? Sure, why not? Are you getting used to these non-stop debates? Starting with the next debate, I'll start loading multiple truth bullets into your truth cylinder. But just like with the weak spots, only one of those bullets can actually refute the proper statement. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right weak spots to refute its statement. If you come up with the wrong combination, you'll take damage to your influence gauge. You can press the Q key to rotate the cylinder and choose which bullet to fire. Okay. Press and release the Q key to cycle through each bullet. Or you can use the mouse wheel. By the way, if the logic difficulty is set to kind, fewer bullets will be loaded into the cylinder. Okay. For our purposes this time, the logic difficulty will be set to mead. What? Oh, come on. Okay. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack! And that's what broke Ms. Maizono's wrist! So, she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her, too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. There's no explanation for how a certain part of the sword got damaged. Okay. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack! No, that's wrong! Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Huh? Why not? Because the sword sheath had been scratched. 
See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you were going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her too. Then... After they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. I got it! You're talking about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean, so I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? Bruh. <laughs> this woman. No, that's not it at all. There's no way Sayaka washed the gold coating off of her hands because there's a certain regulation that talks about what happens to the bathrooms at nighttime. The water was off. I got it! According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at nighttime. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at nighttime. Right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower here yet. Oh, my. You're no different! You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey! <laughs> God damn, that woman! Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means... The killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... The one who damaged the sheath would have had to be the one without the sword. Sayaka. I got it! Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? But we already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. Then the one who attacked first was... Sayaka? Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. 
These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Makoto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Sayaka wanted to... on me? That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid. Or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, then... You're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Because... Because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super boring right now! Come on, hurry up and decide who did it! Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Oh yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? No, that's wrong! There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. That is so obviously just upside down letters. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? I got it! Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? One, one, zero, three, seven? Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. N no that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. Oh! Yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? No, it's just... Uh, look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one, one, 
look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Ah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was 1-1, one, one, but looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa, you might have finally just said something worth a shit. <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. Guys, it's so obvious! Rotate the image 180 degrees. Rotate it. I think maybe I see oh something. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue part and right on to who did it. So, whose name did she write? Sayaka's dying message reveals the real killer's name. If you turn on message 180 degrees, it should become crystal clear. Select someone. Here's my answer. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L E O N. L E O N. Or more accurately, Leon. What? What the hell are you talking about? It, it's just a coincidence. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. No, it's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally and had to write upside down, as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. D that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? I got it! You mean, the burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? What? What? But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. The burnt remains, the button-up shirt, which the killer was unable to get rid of. There's something about it we need to pay attention to in order to figure out who's responsible. How it was I got it! If we look closely at how the shirt was disposed of, we should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on either. You need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> 
No, that's wrong. There was another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty. And that's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. The key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? There we go. Shoot! Oh. Okay, I guess I shot the wrong the thing. The key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order there to destroy- There we go. No, that's wrong! Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on- Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it, some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... But how would you use it? The killer had to use the glass ball a certain way, which was... I got it. it! The killer simply took aim at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. Someone threw that... Through a gap in the gate? Remember what you said before, Hifumi? Hifumi had the key. So the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Once they'd gotten the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire, if the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? that that's right, there's no way. It'd be impossible. Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... I got it! Because the killer is the ultimate baseball star. Isn't that right, Leon? Do you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You, you, you can't be serious. I'm not the killer! These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you! You still won't admit it? Okay, then. Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. And with that, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered, and the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. Closing argument, it's about to begin, would you like to hear more? Sure. Every case has at least one element to bring the class trial to an end. This is the closing argument. In this phase, you'll give a complete summary of the case. You'll have to reproduce the flow of events for the case in the form of a comic book. However, you'll notice that in the comic, there are a number of pieces missing. It's up to you to complete the comic using the provided truth panels. Also, if you take aim at a missing section and press the left mouse button, holy cow, you'll get a hint that might lead to a breakthrough. Well then, good luck and have fun. Okay. Alright. Uh, okay. 
Oh wait, hold on. It's gone wrong way. Right, okay. The killer is you! I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. <laughs> Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. But then something happened that she wasn't prepared for. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. And that's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom door open. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily, and there was a trick to opening it. Sayaka knew about that because I told her, but of course the killer had no way of knowing. So instead, the killer forced the door open, took the kitchen knife, and stabbed Sayaka. But with what strength she had remaining, Sayaka left a dying message. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. And with that, all her strength was gone. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. First, they took off their shirt, which was covered in their victim's blood. Then they took the lint roller in my room and cleaned up the entire area. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they'd ever been there. Afterwards, the killer headed to the trash room to destroy their bloody shirt. They tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator there, but the trash room was blocked off by an especially sturdy gate, preventing access to the incinerator. So they came up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, 
which he'd left in the laundry room. The killer managed to throw the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator switch. For any normal person, that'd be an impossible throw, but the killer had the confidence to take a shot. And that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star. The crystal ball, thrown with absolute precision, hit the switch on the incinerator, which then quickly roared to life. Having destroyed the final piece of evidence, they left the area with, I imagine, a sigh of relief. But there was one thing they missed. Part of the shirt they'd thrown into the fire burnt away and fell out of the incinerator. The killer didn't notice this, and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. Isn't that right, Leon? It would appear that Hero simply forgot his crystal ball in the laundry room. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt, and that's where you saw it, right? Seeing the ball, you thought of a way to take care of everything. So, Leon, do you object to anything that's been said? Do I object? Hell yes, I object! Of course I do! I object, I object, I object! I mean, all of this is just a bunch of stupid theories! You need evidence! Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit! It's bullshit and I refuse to acknowledge it! Well then, I guess this is as good a time as any to present the evidence that proves you did it. Makoto, I believe you're in possession of that evidence? Sometimes during a class trial, your opponent simply won't want to hear what you have to say. When this happens, you'll engage them in a head-to-head -head battle. We like to refer to this as the bullet time battle, okay. okay. During the BTB, you want to destroy your opponent's statements in time with the rhythm, okay. Match your button presses with each tempo marker as they move across the screen and reach the center. Okay. Right mouse button to lock onto an opponent's statement. Destroy the statement you locked onto. Okay. Use this method to deal damage to your opponent. If you can't pull it off, you'll be the one in Okay. Do this consecutively and you'll start a combo. Keep this going. Okay. Opponent and their, and their weak spot statement will appear. At that point, press the left mouse button to shoot it down with Trupa, then pull it like any other statement. Okay. Repeat their statement fast enough and you'll come out victorious. Okay. Okay. When the killer removed the screws from the doorknob, they didn't use anything from your room to do it. Instead, they must have used something that belonged to them something of their own to remove the screws Could it I refuse to acknowledge you you're stupid 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 I have to show indisputable evidence that Leon is the killer and you can figure it out okay. of truth. where's your proof you kidding me not a chance! It wasn't me! Stupid! You lie! Stop talking! Shut up! Where's your proof? 
You kidding me? Not a chance. Stupid. You lie. Shut up. Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. It wasn't me. Stupid. You lie. Stop talking. Shut up. Where's your proof? You kidding me? Wait, failed? What do you mean failed? Wait a minute, what? Is... is this really the end for all of us? Wait, seriously? I guess I want to give it another shot. I refuse shot. to give up yet! I literally, like... I... When the killer removed the screws from the door, instead... I refuse to... Stupid! Proof. You kidding me? Not a chance. It wasn't me. Stupid. You lie. Stop talking. Shut up. Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. Stupid. You lie! Shut up! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance! It wasn't me! Stupid! You lie! Stop talking! Shut up! Where's your proof? You kidding me? Not a chance. Stupid. You lie. Shut up. Shut up. Stupid. Where's your proof? Where's your proof? This should prove it. The screws on the bathroom doorknob were removed. I wonder what kind of tool the killer used to remove them. I mean, it had to be a screwdriver, right? Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure the tool kits we got each had one inside. And that must be what he used. There aren't any other tools anywhere. But the tool kit in my room had clearly never been used. That's because the culprit didn't know it was your room. They thought they were in Sayaka's room. Only the boys got toolkits, so the killer naturally assumed there wouldn't be one in there. Okay, then whose toolkit did the killer use? Stupid, stupid, stupid! It had to be their very own toolkit. Stupid, 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 stupid! Leon, would you mind showing us your toolkit? If I'm right about this, then... The screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. Stupid, stupid, stupid! Huh? And if you say you used it for something else, you'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. And let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Stupid. Stupid. So, you have no rebuttal? Then it would seem we are finished here. Damn.
<laughs> Looks like you've reached your verdict. Then are we ready to cast our votes? You all have a lever in front of you. Use it to make your selection. Oh, just to remind you all, make triple sure you vote for someone. You wouldn't want to be punished for something so minor, right? Okay, then let's get excited! Who will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Looks like you got it right on the money. The blackened in this case, the one that killed Sayaka, is none other than Leon Kawada. Huh? Huh? <laughs> hey, hold on. Hold on a second. Leon. Leon, did you really kill Sayaka? But, but... I don't believe it. You son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. What the hell is wrong with you? I, I didn't I... have a choice. It was kill or be killed. So that's why... I killed her first. None of you are any different! One wrong step and you'd be the one standing here. It was a complete chance that I wound up like this. I was just... <laughs> unlucky. That's all. Hey! Come on! You expect me to just accept my death? Everything's become clear. The decision we made was right after all. But when I think about that, honestly... I'd be better off if we'd been wrong. Because if what we came up with really is the truth, then that truth is that Sayaka was trying to frame me. But even if that's true, I can't say she was wrong. After all, the mastermind... It's all because of that video. Even I couldn't handle what I saw in there. If I was her, and the video actually had something to do with me, I can't even imagine. Now we're trapped here with no way out. They're probably waiting for me. Why? I can't afford Why? to be stuck in here. The one thing that was more important to her than anything else. Her dreams, her friends. To have, some, to, have to see something like that happen to them. And Sayaka. I... I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it. Even some things that weren't so pleasant. That's why Sayaka, for the friends that meant so much to her, that's why she betrayed me. So when she said, No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I need you on my side. <laughs> she was lying to me from the very beginning. She was using me. Was that why she talked to me in the first place? I guess I'll never know. Because there's nothing I can do to ask her what she was thinking. Once you're dead, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> the entertainment industry must sure be terrifying, huh? I mean, to try and kill someone just because of those relationships. Ba -bum, ba -bum. She seemed so nice and lovely on the outside, but inside she descended into pure madness. W what did you say? Phew. I understand. Really, I do. You're in utter despair thanks to Sayaka's betrayal, right? Compassion, intimacy, love. The stronger those feelings, the stronger the despair we feel when they collapse. Stop screwing with us. This is all your fault. Sayaka being forced to do something like that. All of it. Everything. It's all your fault. Suddenly in a frenzy, I lunged at Monokuma, but... That's enough. That's enough. As angry as I was, Kyoko latched onto my arm without hesitation. Her grip was like iron. Strong enough, I was sure it would leave a bruise. Calm down. If you really want to make her enemies pay for what they've done, you need to let it go for now. Damn it! <laughs> ba -bum, ba -bum. Ah, that was a close one. I thought for sure you were going to give me a good walloping. <laughs> Just barely avoided punishment you did. Yes, indeed! Now then, since you so magnificently revealed the identity of the killer during the class trial, the blackened Lian Kuwata will receive his punishment. Pun punishment? You mean... execution Wait a second! 
I didn't have a choice. I had to kill her. Yeah, that's yeah, it. I was just protecting myself in the heat of the moment. It was self-defense. Is that okay? How exactly was it self-defense? Mm. When you forced your way into the bathroom, did you or did you not use your very own toolkit? After she'd set herself in the bathroom, you went out of your way to head back to your own room. Then you came all the way back, broke into the bathroom, and killed her. Am I wrong? Do you understand? You had any number of chances to stop what you were doing, but you chose not to. Is it not because you had an unclouded intent to commit murder? So, Th No, that's... that's not... Stop it. I've had enough of this. Oh. Oh, are you sure? You were closer to her than anyone, were you not? He killed your precious Sayaka, do you understand? I can't say Leon is solely to blame. Of course, I don't plan on, and on blaming Sayaka either. Because... Because the one to blame is him. Huh? Huh? If it weren't for you, this never would have happened to Sayaka or Leon. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be fighting against the one who put us in this situation. The mastermind. Unbelievable. Uh oh, did you awaken to your sister hey, justice? Um... Well, it just so happens that there's nothing more unethical than an unwavering sense of justice. After all, it's people with that sort of mentality that perpetuate war all over the world. Hmm. Is that the kind of justice that's awakened within you? Just shut up. Okay, well, anyway, more importantly... Chills! Chills! Kills! Let's hurry up and get to what everyone's been waiting for! The punishment! I'm begging you! Please! Don't do this! Hey! Come on now! No more begging! No more excuses! You must pay the penalty for breaking the rules! Society demands it! Stop! Please! Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment! No, 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 no! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! No! Well, that's fucked up. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> I knew it was Leon the second I saw the writing on the wall, though. So, like, that was obvious. What we saw, that was the true face of despair. I mean, if we can't call it that, what else could we call it? Extreme! <laughs> Man, my adrenaline is pumping right out of control. <laughs> What's going on? I, I, can't I can't take it. Do we really have to keep doing this? I just can't take it. Well? Well, hey, if you don't like it. <laughs> all you gotta do is swear to cut all ties with the outside world and accept living here forever. But that's only if every single one of you can get on board with that. <laughs> D damn you! Man, fuck you! Why the fuck are you doing all this evil shit to us? What the heck? Evil? 
You make it sound like I'm some dark, awful, secret society type of guy. Or in this case, a dark, awful, secret society type of bear. Well. Um, so why are you putting an upstanding young citizen like me through such a grueling ordeal? Hey, um... It seems like you're trying to use common sense to make sense of something that doesn't make sense. That's like trying to put a mile on a scale. I just don't think it's possible. Um... Hey, uh, I... Don't think what you're saying and what I'm saying quite fit together. <laughs> shit. Like piece of shit. I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna pound your ass into the ground. <laughs> you must really hate me to get so angry, huh? But if you do that, you're barking way up the wrong tree. <laughs> what happened happened because more than one of you decided you wanted to get out, right? No matter how much time passes, you can't cut free of your regrets from the outside world. You're to blame. <laughs> of course we can't cut free of the outside world. Being trapped in this insane place. Hmm. Hmm. You're trapped, are you? Well, I'm sure once you learn all the mysteries of the school, your thinking will change for sure. You'll all think, boy, isn't it so wonderful how we all get to live here forever. What does this mean? What are you trying to say? Hey. I feel like there's some deeper meaning hitting, hidden in there, just like before. Thrills, chills, anyway, kills. let's get to the Blacken's punishment. That's what everyone is waiting for, after all. Hey. When you say everyone, who exactly are you referring to? <laughs> Sorry, I said everything I've got to say. I need to save some of the fun for later. <laughs> And just like that, he was gone. He left us there, overwhelmed by a nightmare turned reality. Damn. Even after he was gone, we stood there forever, unable to move. Actually, no, it wasn't that long, I think. Everyone just lost their sense of time. We were all too scared. Scared of being alone. <coughs> 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 No one even tried to speak. Their faces were stone, their voices dead. But it was in that moment. Just a second. Makoto, can I talk to you for a second? She moved in close and whispered into my ear. Makoto. Before we head back, there's something I want to talk to you about. It's about Sayaka, isn't it? I'm surprised he figured it out. Listen. I told you before the class trial started. You had to figure out the mystery of this case yourself. You wanted me to realize how Sayaka portrayed me by myself, didn't you? The thought never even crossed my mind. I feel like such a fool becoming such an easy target like that. It's true. Sayaka meant to double-cross you. That's a fact that you can never change. But even till the very end, she wasn't sure of her decision. That's why. As she lay dying, she was thinking of you. She was thinking of me? You can't just say something like that. I mean, there's no way you can know that. Only Sayaka would know for sure, and we can't ask her now. However... Even if you can't ask her, you can infer it, don't you think? Her final thought was how she could protect you. What? So... The fact that she used her last ounce of energy to leave her dying message proves it. If she didn't care what happened to you, she never would have left that message. Well, maybe she just wanted to get back at the person who had killed her. Certainly. That's certainly one possibility, but I don't think that's what it was. Anyway... She was uncertain. She wasn't sure she could kill someone or deceive you, which is why her plan failed. Her hesitation attracted failure. Right. It's almost ironic when you think about it. Why are you telling me all this? Because you're the kind of person who can overcome this. Because you can move past the deaths of your friends, Sayaka and Leon, and keep moving forward. Correct. Without someone like that, the others would never be able to break three of such a desperate situation. Move past their deaths? That's... I can never do that. No, I'm going to carry with them with me the rest of my life. How could I possibly move past something like that? Leon, Sayaka, I'll carry them with me forever. I'll carry their memories with me wherever I go. So instead of forgetting them, you're choosing the hard road. <laughs> well, I have high expectations for you. As she said that, she revealed the smallest smile. Hey. By the way, I have to admit, I'm curious. How did you know I wanted to talk to you about Sayaka? Oh, well, I'm psychic. What? Huh? <laughs> Kidding. I just have pretty good intuition. Oh, he used Sayaka's line. Damn. Alright. Damn. R.I.P. So there, 
there's the next chapter completed. I can save again. <laughs> you received the despair bat present. Cool. Yes, I want to save. Thank you. Uh, yes, overwrite. Okay. I think at this point, uh, how long have I been streaming? Uh, let me, let me check the... How long has it... Well, I don't, I don't know, but... Oh my god, it's 1 a.m. Holy fuck! <laughs> okay, um... I think that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. Uh... I have been streaming for fucking hours, apparently. Uh, okay, so, uh... Goodbye to, uh, whoever is even still here. <laughs> Alright. Stream... Stream over now. Goodbye. <laughs>